have a, what is it, the little thing I was going to say, intelligence, wit, perception, and death. Oh, I meant depth. Depth? <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about you. Uh, That's your, your show thing. Oh, is that what it is? Mm-hmm. Oh, intelligence, okay. wit, perception, and depth. Oh. The Jason Froberg Hour. I dig that. You heard it here first. Well, uh, that's a, that's a, let's just get this thing rolling, huh? Yeah. Welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Uh, obviously, my guest today, Mr. Tommy Elliott, bad motherfucker, lead singer of uh, Baker's Dozen. Wearer of clown shoes. Wearer of clown shoes. Yes. I dig it, man. How you doing today? Good, as well as can be su- uh, expected. You haven't seen me since uh, the Rona thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. They caught up with you, huh? Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. How was that whole experience uh, with the virus, the I plague? I should not have around? been French kissing park benches. It's my own fault. <laughs> That's true. Um, that is true. Put a lot of shit in perspective. Yeah? Yeah. Um, made me realize who's important in my life and... Uh, trying to take care of myself a little bit better i mean i think we all are nowadays oh yeah definitely different weird the fevers the chills fucking gnarly don't recommend it for anyone that's brutal man did you end up in the hospital no No? i did end up uh quarantined for my baby couldn't see her or touch her for two weeks i mean i remember you telling me about that that was pretty that was pretty intense the the loneliness thing was was weird because you just realized fuck i only got myself to deal with this and uh yeah the sleeplessness now um i'm better again but the uh, i got aches and pains that i fucking never knew existed bro kind of weird shit yeah and uh, definitely uh, a mortality thing came about. Oh, you, you know? kind of became aware yes. that uh, this game is Oh, dude, end. I was like, fuck it, man, for as long as you know me, dude. Fucking party beast, fucking whatever. I'm, I'm, yeah, you are. We're partying, I'm there. Um, it put a little shit into perspective and uh, made me slow at a pace, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've also done quite a bit of slowing down on my end as well. This whole experience has made me realize that maybe partying isn't shouldn't be the central focus of my life. Right. You know, uh, entertainment and uh, self enjoyment, pleasures, that kind of thing. It's right. just uh, that's not what it's all about. And growing up, and you think this life's gonna be oh, over dude. soon. I, right. I better party right. as hard as, as I can. As hard as I can. I better do all kinds of fucked up right. things. I gotta send it, bro. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and it's just like. Um, that process of of really trying as hard as I can to 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 live life as hard as I can, right. it just it made me crazy. Honestly, well, I, I think it totally is not a realistic way to go about doing this whole life game. And it's it it makes sense at first, you know, especially right. when I was like eighteen, nineteen, and I'm starting to d- decide what I'm going to do with the rest of my existence, right. which was just like party, you know, like let's have as much fun as possible. And treat this world like a playground, and um, and now I'm starting to realize that it's like uh, not very rewarding. No, it it's very empty. With well, I know that you've we've been both talking about Buddhism and Hinduism, which we'll dig into a little bit more. Of course, but the whole thing with that is service to others, as you realize. Yeah, it makes makes yourself feel better. Which of course, and when we're in our party and phase and everything else, we're like, fuck that. Yeah, it's all about you. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's not it's it's me, me, me instead of we, 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 yeah. you know, and I went in to having the Rona um, as Tommy Elliott and I came out as the great quarantini. <laughs> 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 I mean, uh, it was weird. I did, you know, no upkeep. I decided just to, to keep the, the stash and the beard and all that other shit. People don't know me like that. People know me as like a clean-faced rocker and shit. And I realized that I was living my life with the perception of the way that people saw me. Yeah. And kind of got burnt and over that, I guess, a little bit. Because, I mean, at the same time, everything shut the fuck down. Who's going to see you? Yeah. <laughs> You know, and I've realized um, I've realized in my quarantine space that uh, 
that, yeah, people do, they perceive you as this object, right? right. They have this collection of memories and right. they do their best to like categorize those Which as Which leaves you afraid to change because yeah. you're, you don't want to screw up people's perception of yourself. And at the same time, you, you have to evolve. Right. You want to evolve, but you're afraid to evolve. Does that make sense? Yeah. I know. Uh, and this, this I mean, I've seen you go through the tons of different fucking changes, man. Oh, yeah. I first met your hair down to your ass, big old long freak beard and shit, and now you're like super clean shaven and zen. As, as zen as I can be right, right. when I'm not losing my mind, right, right. with the uh, I have rage problems, you know. Sure. Everybody's got their oh, thing. Oh, dude, I'm an angry young man. Yeah, some people are like, I don't get that at all, and I just, I totally am, I, I was born with it, you know, as I've always kind of had a temper mm. and so that part becomes part of your practice right it's like your weaknesses become your practice right it's not don't like let your weaknesses be weaknesses let your weaknesses define where your strength is going to come from right um like i have addictive tendencies right Me and, too. I, and i i, I just accept. i can't just do a little i always yeah. gotta do a lot it's it's gonna be that way, right? right? So I just go, don't do don't do that. You have a you're an addict, right? You're gonna just get not not just I'm not even talking about drugs, right? right. I'm talking about like video games right. or um, just any random shit, you know, types of food. There's things that you just that trigger real quick, and you get uh, the response you want, and then you're like, do that a lot, and and that's just an addictive tendency. And ice, ice cream. Yeah, right. I was watching. Good <laughs> ice cream. I was watching man. Mark Marin, and he had this whole bit about how he can't eat ice cream because right. he's it's the same thing, right? And no. It takes you a long time to. It's not just that. a little of the Ben and Jerry. It's that yeah. whole motherfucker. Yeah, and that's that's bad. <laughs> oh, dude, he treats it like cocaine, and, right. and I, one of his stand up bits he's talking about um so he goes and gets the ben and jerry's like with the fr the the fruity like all kinds of flavor in it but he's like i gotta cut this shit so he just gets the plain vanilla and then he goes home and does like a scoop of vanilla and a scoop of the 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 sugary stuff oh cutting it like cocaine cutting it like that. cocaine because ah. he's, he's an addict right so it's his, it's that's how he references <laughs> things and then uh and then he goes you know i finished my bowl of ice cream and he goes that was delicious and then it starts right and right. then the cycle in your head has begun and how long can you how long can you stand it before you're like, all right, I'm going back to the freezer. Right. For and, another. Yeah. And then he's, he's like, and then I, I fucking say, fuck it. And I, you're eating I, right out of the cart, big giant bowl. Right? right. And he's like, and I eat like, I've eaten like half of the, each carton of ice cream because I just made the biggest bowl of ice cream <laughs> and my stomach's hurting. And then he goes, and then it starts spinning cause the ice cream's gone. And then, you know, maybe 30 minutes later, I'm like just inside the freezer door, not even with a bowl, just eating the ice cream right out of the carton until it's all gone. And I feel terrible. And now I'm like, do I go back to the store for more ice cream? Right. And it's like, no man, you have addictive tendencies and you shouldn't be touching this stuff. And so he's like, I can't even fucking eat ice cream. And, um, and I've, I've realized that about myself personally. Like, um, I just, I celebrated recently the nine years of no alcohol, no tobacco, no any, like any stupid drugs like cocaine or anything like that. You know, I can uh, imagine. Did you smoke cigarettes? Yeah. Really? I, I was smoking a pack or two a day. Jesus. Yeah. What was your brand? Marlboro. All right. I like the Marlboros and they would bring them down Reds to like or, Fremont street. Reds or, or lights. I, I preferred the Marlboro lights, but then by the end I was doing Listen. the reds. <laughs> um, the red apples. That, that's a fucking cigarette. Yeah. If that is a great smoke, cigarette. It's a great cigarette. There's the short, Red, right? And that's so a, that's the perfect cigarette. Were you a if you were a drinking smoker? That's the thing is they go together, right? right? And then right, and then of right. course cocaine makes it all that's better. Why I, why I asked? Yeah, oh, yeah. they all it's all this party, right? So it was like um, all the powdery stuff that went first because those are really addicting, and you you see how terrible those are for you really fast. So it was easy to quit for me because right. of the negative was so heavy on that stuff. So I was just like, I was not interested. heavy when. I quit that shit. I was heavily into hallucinogens. At the yeah. Time. So I, I watched all my friends gathered around waiting for the next line and everything, looking like a bunch of fucking demons. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is, too. Right. It's an addiction demon. And, and it's thank, piloting. Thank God for hallucinogens. That's all I could say on that one, man, because it kept me away from that shit. Never been a fan of the meth. Never been a fan of the cocaine. Yeah. Uh, watched a lot of my friends lose their shit to heroin. 
Um, heroin's the end all. You're right. you're done. If you've made that decision, you know what that. Everybody knows what decision you're making when you right. start doing fucking right. heroin, and that's the fuck my life. Everything's Snorting over. It, smoking it, shooting it, whatever. Yeah, you know you're, what the fuck you're doing. You're about to go down a real dark hole, right. and it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. It doesn't matter how good that drug makes you feel for the moment that you've injected it or smoked it. Right. It's not worth the litany of abuses that are about to occur after you start coming down. And uh, nobody's a casual heroin user. <laughs> no, that's not how that works. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I'm just going to casually use some smack. No, yeah, that's no. terrible. That's no, terrible. It is. Anybody I've ever known that um, that has been a heroin user is always been like, this is the dumbest thing I ever do with my life, you know, and they're just ruined by it. Right. And they can't help themselves either. They know that they're. They know they're addicted and they want to not be addicted, but they can't um, bring themselves to suffer through the entire process of like cleaning up. It's love. It's a, it's a, yeah. it's a, a insufficiency to love yourself. Yeah. I know that sounds like we're kind of fucked up and self-centered and shit, but you do need to, to love yourself to a point in order that you won't... Uh, destroy yourself that way and yeah you know in order if, if you love yourself others will love you as well because you're going to be a child of love and you know open to knowing that you don't want to destroy your temple yeah and I never, I never consider this thing a temple, right? I consider right. this Me thing. Me either. A, I fucking considered it yeah. a goddamn apartment on the Lower East Side. Yeah, I considered <laughs> it a prison sentence, man. My whole life, this is trying my, to get out. This right. is my prison cell, right? And I, I was it. stuck in, and I was right. trapped here. Every day, I'd wake up, I'd want to kill myself, and I would just um, soak that with booze, numb it up. Yeah, numb it up. You know, it's like, oh, that's okay. That life doesn't have any meaning to you, and that you're in this dark place. It's just like get fucked up. You won't care anymore. You know, just right. that that waking up in the morning morning part is real hard right because right. it's like oh no all these thoughts and things right and uh it's just like numb it with booze soak it with booze um and um you know when i got rid of the alcohol i didn't have that anymore and i just became a huge pothead is what i did right because it was just like trade one addiction for another even though it's not a physically yeah. addicting thing it was just it was my obsession with um, oh, it can be a physically addicting it, thing. It can actually. The first, my first sober October, <laughs> um, it. which actually this should, this will be airing in sober right. October. So this is a, a great uh, this is a great podcast for that because I think this will be the first one for for October. Um, yeah, no. Um, what was it? My first sober October though, I was smoking so much weed. Right, like it was like a point of pride. <laughs> how how much weed I could smoke? Oh, dude, when I met you, so you, you had the fucking tackle box. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, I did. I I, I went around with that fucking you had the tackle, fucking box, tackle everywhere. box, man. Uh, Would yeah. you like to try some of this? Oh, I got a little of this. I start some of this. I'm, nothing the matter with that. Don't get me wrong. No, it's, it's everything in moderation. Where I was in my life, right? And honestly, compared to alcohol, yeah, it's not going to hurt you. Yeah, what's there? I don't see the question. Oh, uh, I was, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not even close. No, not Not even even close. Not even. Um, but with my personality, right. My personality type being an addictive personality, uh, it was real easy for me to, um, to, to go into that whole, uh, overboard overboard (laughs) with the weed thing (laughs) uh, until I was just like, I can't, I can't store memories anymore. Damn. And, um, like I don't remember like in the middle of the conversation we're having, I wouldn't remember what you're saying to me and I wouldn't be able to pay. I wouldn't be able to focus. Um, I wouldn't remember what, I wouldn't remember anything, right? That was, was my thing with focusing because I oh, usually after after I would see you like during the high voltage things and I'd play yeah. play a show or whatever, my adrenaline would be way the fuck up here, and then we'd go to the back bar. Ah, the, ah, back, the bar. back bar, yeah, and uh, burn out. All of a sudden, my focus ability was fucking crazy. It's gone. Is because everybody's coming. Oh, great show! Blah, 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 blah. And I'm trying to conversate with you yeah. about Star Wars and. Uh, uh, Terry, what was this, the singer's name who was going to be the first singer of Led Zeppelin? Terry Reed. Terry Reed, yeah. It's my we, favorite singer. Right. We talk, start talking about Terry Reed and Star Wars, and I want to focus on that shit. Yeah. You know? It's, and it's, it's hard. <sighs> yeah. Especially when you're baked out of your mind. <laughs> right. We would, uh, I'd have those, I'd have that uh, DVD player in the car, and we'd be watching right, South Park. dude. And then I'd get out of my car with my car running. 
and lock it and shut the doors were so high, I totally forgot. And the car's sitting like, I'd go mix a whole band with my car running out back locked up with, with South Park, Park running. Because we were just baked and we just got out of the seats and walked in. And it wasn't even like, uh, and then we go to smoking and I'd be like, the fucking car's been sitting out here this whole time. And then I can't get in and then everyone's trying to break into my car. <laughs> so we can get doing drunk shit things, idiot. but not drunk. Yeah, I wasn't drinking at all. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's it was kind of ridiculous. Right. So it's get, getting to that point where I just accept um, accept my uh, who I am, right? Like I, like you were saying the the hallucinogens. Right. Being trapped in this in my house for seven months, I you know had plenty of time to experiment and do probably too much hallucinogens. Right. And I, you know, I, I um, mix them with meditation. You're good. Yeah. Well, I've been meditating every day, right. and meditation is like one of my favorite things. Right. And uh, but that came out of the hallucinogens, right? Uh, because of the things I'd be watching. Um, and reading. I mean, you were telling me you were reading Be Here Now by uh, I love that. Ram Dass. Yeah. That's, that's, a lot of fucking people don't know who, who that is. Ram Dass is a, a fantastic individual and a spiritual I think leader. I think he's no longer with us. He passed away about right. five months ago, right. six months ago. Unfortunately, right as I was getting into him, I was like, Ram Dass is still alive. We should mm. totally go see a lecture or something. And... Uh, and then he passed away. Um, but Ramdas is an amazing individual who right. had a fascinating life story. Used to be a uh, psychi- psychiatric professor right. or, or something like that for Harvard um, uh, and uh, Stanford as well. Yeah, and then he ended up going to um, he ended up going to South America right. to do some mushrooms. Came back with some mushrooms, and then him and a few other psychiatrists started dosing psilocybin right and they were like what is this i don't get it and then they and then um it turned into like this circle of just these people that were doing psilocybin were the only ones that could relate to each other anymore uh because everyone else just is like half asleep right if you're not and i i don't mean to insult people that aren't half a, that like my buddy doc else is a great example of this right he's never touched any of the, any of that shit um never never in his life but he's super awake his third fucking eye is wide open when you have conversations with the guy you're just like yeah i mean you're awake man like you know it's not a it's not a thing for him but most people they don't have that 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 um that part of them where you had this this life experience where you you disassociate with the self and you realize that you are all things and all things are you right right and and so it's best to just love everybody like yourself because they are you. And All decisions, man, are either made from yeah. fear or love. Yeah, that's, that's it. right. That's it. And you, it's best to make all of them from love right. if you can. And it's the hardest thing because you don't want to consider yourself weak and everybody these days looks at love as weak, even mm-hmm. though that's something that everybody wants. We're just afraid to ask for it. Yeah. You know, it's the most important thing and it's free. Right, right. It's free. Uh, and it, it works both ways. It's when you give love, you receive love. Right. That's and the same thing with service. Service, service sometimes feels fucking hard. Yeah. Right. I mean, and sometimes, you know, you feel like your favor bucket's empty and uh, you, that you spread yourself really thin. But at the same time of spreading yourself really thin, you're light. Yeah. And that's, that's part of it. Uh, uh, I mean, definitely, it, sometimes it sucks to be in service. It does. To, well, it depends on your attitude about right, it. Right, right. Well, I, it's hard to keep a good attitude if you're serving the same person yeah, over and over and over. It really and, is. And you're not seeing any change in that person. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Oh, but yeah. But you can't give up because that's not part of the path. Yeah. Sometimes it's best to put some distance between you and certain people, though. Right. Certain people aren't going to... Um, they're always going to be a, but is that a, a way hindrance. Of, is that a way of giving up? No, it's a way of self. It's a way of loving yourself. Hmm. I, th- I I look at it that way. I I personally have some issues with um, specific members of like family and stuff like that. Right. And um, and so I have to put space. I have to be like, look, it doesn't stop I, you. From I love loving you. Them. Right. I love right. you. I forgive you. Uh, I'm sorry for any harm I've ever done. You know, uh, but. No, ma- no matter, regardless of all this, right, your behavior is not going to change. You're going to consistently be aggressive and manipulative towards me. And, mm-hmm. and I just, I'm, I don't appreciate that. And so it's best if I can, I can love you from a distance. 
is kind of the attitude I have to take about it, um, which hurts. Right. But it's it's really what's best because um, some people just are lost in their sickness. They're lost in their in their perception of reality and their attachment to their desire to bring their their per- perception of what should be and what is don't line up. And so they're constantly just trying to force what should be in their head, which is ridiculous, into the world. Right. And that includes everything that I do, everything my other family members do. Um, they're just like always like, you're not what I want you to be. And it's like, well, why do I care what you want me to be? That's not, that's irrelevant. It's not about what you want. Well, we're all also, we're all reflections of each other. Yeah. So, I mean, sometimes what people are putting out to you is how they're feeling about themselves. Big time. That's, that's a big part of what it is, right? They're not, um, satisfied with, um, their personal existence. Right. We all get that way from time to time. Big time. I have you know, a I have a huge depression problem. Especially now. Yeah. Especially now with isolation and social disconnect. Oh yeah. I mean there's there's a thing about social distancing, but there's a whole thing about social disconnect which I've just been seeing massively. I mean there's a lot more aggression going on out there. Yeah. There, it's still more of the me 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 instead of the we 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 type thing going on out there especially now yeah because yeah, everyone's hurting and, and right when, when you're when you're hurting that's when the, when, when you the get me desperate. becomes right super apparent right like your set your separation from people, others is, people get desperate man i mean yeah it, it's it becomes real whenever you start to suffer that intensely right and it's hard to love everyone else when you're so focused on your own personal suffering right that's a hard thing to do and it not being uh, the norm anymore mm. that we we forget how lucky we are. Yeah. You know, and what we should actually kind of be thankful and grateful for. I mean, granted, it's not the normal. So a lot of the things that we're thankful and grateful for with the normal frustrate and piss us off that it's not there anymore. But we're not seeing the small little things, uh, you know. Having having someone to love, right? Having family, um, having you know, uh, having a roof over your head, even though you know who knows what's up with that these days. Who knows right? at this point? Um, yeah, there's a lot of scary shit. Man. It is. It's terrifying right now. Right. I know I'm I'm personally scared out of my mind. Right. I mean, I, I'm not trying to hide that in any way, shape, or form. It's really scary right now. Uh, there's no work. Um, the unemployment, I mean, for me personally, unemployment still hasn't come through. It's been seven months. Jesus Christ. So my savings is, like, almost gone. I mean, it's gone. It's gone. Um, so we're like, all right, let's move to a small place. And so we're, like, selling all our shit. And we're going to have to, you know, we're just downsizing everything. And we're going to move to a small place. Um, and I'm trying to just get a, a, a job, job, you know, like, cause the entertainment industry is not coming back anytime soon. So it's like, I guess I'm going to go work at a fucking sandwich shop. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, what am I going to do? I mean, I don't care at this point. It's like, can you go make $9 an hour? It's better than not getting, you know, I get no unemployment anyway. So, uh, it's just really scary out there. You know, the world's just collapsing on a lot of people. And the government's not helping. No. They're playing games with. Uh, they're playing games with us to fill their own pockets and and grab for power. Right. As opposed to taking care of the citizens of their country that they're responsible for, as their elected officials of those citizens. So yeah, it's a it's a terrifying time, and I and and I'm definitely not in the worst position, right? Like I'm in a bad position, but. Um, there's plenty of people that were in this position that I'm in three, four months ago, and right. I don't know what they're doing now. You know, um, I know a lot of people had to move back in with like their families. You know, right. they're like living with their parents or. There's you know, a mass they, they exodus from home. California. There's a mass exodus from New York. Um, people are are leaving California and then coming here, and here there's nothing too. Yeah, I mean, there's no work. People are. Uh, that's one thing I have noticed too, man. Is uh, 
the, the family unit has become more solid because we have to. Uh, mine tore apart. Everyone tore themselves to pieces in my family. But they're a negative, it's a negative circle. I realized that. It was a big, that was a big wake-up call for me was um, when the shit hit the fan, right? There's two kinds of people. There's loving people right. and there's bitter people. And, um, and my family's very much full of bitter people. Just bitter, angry, aggressive, uh, negative people. So and you guys didn't pull together? You... No, everyone just basically told everyone to go fuck themselves. And uh, I don't, wow. sp- I don't speak to most people that I was that I would consider my friends and family. Right. That I had this really big circle. I don't speak to any of those people anymore, um, including my own mother. I mean, I still talk to her and I still go say I love you. And I'm not interested in like being around her anymore because she's lost her fucking mind completely at this point in life. Um, and, uh, yeah. And, you know, you reach out to friends and family and you go, Hey man, I'm having a hard time. Um, you know, this and that. And they just go, stop being a pussy. You know, like, it's like, that's not the right response. No. And then, uh, you know, you try to just be honest with people. Like I was going down this whole spiritual thing. I'm trying not to swear so much. I'm trying not to be such a negative person. Right. right? Because like I was saying before, um, I come from a negative circle. I wasn't super aware that it was a negative circle until we needed each other not to be there for each other. You know what I mean? And I watched everyone just, just not be there for each other. Um, and so that really hurt a lot and I had to find my own space. You know, I had to find my own, I didn't really find myself, right? Because you identify with that family circle. Right. And when that's, when that falls apart like that, and you realize that they're not good for you, that they're like a negative influence on your life, um, spiritually and mentally, you're just like, damn, it's been going on for 35 years. And I, I was too blind to see it. And, uh, but now it just is clear as day. Like every interaction I've ever had with him all the way back to the past, I go, yeah, that's not the way we're supposed to talk to each other. That's not the way we're supposed to treat each other. Um, and we're always, um, I watch, I, I'll put on like, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. And I just, now it's just me watching my family, right? Like that whole, um, just totally, um, uh, their interaction, their interaction with each other, right? It's right. just a bunch of people that are totally fucked and, um, and they just, uh, accept each other for all their terribleness, right? Because I'm so horrible. You can be horrible and we're just going to be horrible to each other right. and horrible to everyone around us. And we'll laugh about it and we'll say that it's funny. And that, that'll, be, that'll be our excuse for it. That this is all funny. It's ha ha ha. It's, Even a, though it's, it's not highly, funny. Highly toxic. It's very toxic. It's right. incredibly toxic. And, um, and so yeah, I, had to, I, had to, I had to push away really hard I had to, because I was like, hey, uh, I'm trying to do all this Buddhism stuff. I'm trying to walk the Eightfold Path, which is a very difficult path to walk. Um, and, um, you get ridiculed. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, everyone thinks it's silly, right. Um, that I found, you know, cause it's a very atheistic circle. Um, so it's like, um, you know, my spirituality is a joke to them and they don't take it seriously, of course. And so I was just like, look, I just don't need to have these communications with you anymore then. Um, and that didn't go over well either. <laughs> Uh, you know, everyone takes that personally when I'm just like, I mean, I guess it is personal, uh, right. but I, it's just, it's about me though. It's about, I'm trying to walk this path and I can't sit here and share horrible memes well, any work and that talk you, shit and swear with you guys and be negative. Any and work always, that you want to do to, yeah. for yourself that you, you want to work on yourself is usually viewed in, in as a weakness and is ridiculed by others because yeah. they don't have the balls to work on themselves. Oh, yeah. And everybody usually realizes when they see somebody else working on themselves, they see the flaws in themselves. Oh, yeah. Which automatically uh, makes people defensive. Big time. And want to put what they feel bad about themselves upon you with, you know, ridiculing you, calling you a pussy or whatever else. Yeah. And it sucks. It does suck, you know. It's it's people that I, you know, know my whole life, and so people, um, people you love, people I, mean, I love, and I still love. Right, I still love. Um, and, and it's not about not loving people, you know. It's no. about 
uh, I need to take care of myself, right? Like I realized, I realized how, how screwed up everything was up here, right? All these, all these ridiculous programs and protocols that are going on that were put there by my mother, who is a total mess, um, you know, uh, and my father, who's got PTSD and rage problems, um, genetic alcoholism. Uh, there's all these things that I'm dealing with, right? right. Um, uh, massive depression, uh, manic, manic depressive, like anxiety issues. Um, and they're all just in there in this chemical cluster F. I didn't say, you know, see, I'm, mm-hmm. I, I didn't say a swear word. Oh, no, I feel I, you on the anxiety thing, yeah, too, man. I mean, um, I come even coming here, clear, clear, clear across town. Yeah. I've been driving over. I had the, the massive. Oh, dude, traffic's anxiety. terrible. Well, traffic's terrible and just seeing people. Yeah, the communication with others. Right, is, yeah. is, is, is frayed and, and distant and, and weird. And, dude, I love you dearly. You know that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the just the interaction between people and, and that whole thing is kind of, let me put it this way, it needs to be a very special person for me to come out of my shell. Oh, well, I appreciate you coming out here. And that's kind of how I feel about society in general these days. Yeah. It's like uh, I can do without. That's it, man. And, and that's fucking horrible to say because, I mean. It's not horrible to say. Our well, society's I usually, come, a mess. I usually come from a, a place of service, and I o- yeah. always try to fucking help my friends out and be there as much as I fucking can for people. Yeah. Spread myself thin, whatever the fuck, because it's, it's not okay just to how the fuck I am. But lately, it's not the way that I feel. <laughs> no. You know? No, me neither. I've been I've been working on on so much that I realized that like things like playing video games, right. um, I have that this beautiful fish tank, um, all my just obsessions that I have outside of doing just taking care of Jason things. Right. Um, those take away from the taking care of Jason things. Right. Like uh, I do. I do my workouts. It's usually one of those P90X workouts. It's like 90 minutes of my time, right? And then I'll meditate for 30 minutes. That's two hours of my day gone right off the bat. And then I try to read for two hours. You know, so there's four hours of my day gone. Anything that makes you happy is taking care of yourself. Yeah. Well, entertainment. When you're sitting there just trying to entertain your mind. Right, right. um, That is. Read a book. Yeah. Well, it's (laughs) and it's not even that either, right? Um, So now now I'm just getting into the what most people would consider totally cuckoo bird stuff, which is just uh, the real goal to finding like inner peace and and this happiness thing uh, is really just to be totally good sitting in the dirt with a glass of water. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's it. You don't no, have, no desires. No desires. The, the, the key to happiness is to shorten your desire list. Yeah. And any time the hardest fuck for us in the modern world. Yeah. You know, Western civilization has a long desire list, bro. That's all we do. Right. That's all we do is fulfill desires. Right. Fear, lots of fear, and uh, consume, consume, consume. Yeah. Basically it, man. I mean, and we fill the hole within our souls with materialistic shit. You know? That's what it is. Right. Uh, that that to to divorce from that is hard as fuck, and nobody has nobody can relate to that, right? No. Um, like uh, uh, even me, I'm looking forward to the brand new Xbox. I mean, <laughs> I don't even care. You know, it's uh, become a thing where it's like the next video game. I'm looking forward. I don't to even some, know some you know some Star Wars for the holiday and some Assassin's Creed Valhalla and shit. Yeah. And so I'm I mean I'm I'm stuck in that shit too. Those are those little things that fill the the warped little holes in my fucking soul. You know, I mean it's it's easy to say that type of shit, but then when you look at yourself too, the, all those little things that make you happy, the the things, the materialistic shit that you look forward to. Is still part of ego. Again. Yeah, it's still part of aversion and desire. Right. You're still um, you're trying to get away from the silence or the constant 
babbling in your mind, whichever right. end of that spectrum you're on. Oh, shit, there's, on. I'm, uh, I'm the constant babbling. Yeah, there's a lot of a shit big, going on in there. <laughs> that's a big thing. Uh, it's been a, that's a, one of my biggest things is to remain in that meditative state. Right. To remain in the place where my mind isn't constantly all over the place, right. man. Um, one of the things I do to practice that, uh, to help with that, um, that I can share is, uh, straight out of Ram Dass, right? Be here now. Uh, he says a uh, great mantra uh, that you can take with you, uh, is, uh, Rama, you know, the name of God. And you, you just repeat that in your head as this current forcing against the mass that like, they say like, take like a, the, the idea of like a, a lake bed and, uh, and there's just like rain happening, right? And you got all these little thoughts sprinkling all over the place. But if you have a good current current flowing against all those thoughts and you just can go Rama, Rama, Rama in your head, right? I'm not saying just walk around saying Rama all the no, no, time. No, 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 no. Uh, but you keep that in the back of your head going. And that is a, um, that's a practice to stop the scatterbrain. Where you're just like, oh, right. what am I doing tomorrow? Oh, I'm Stop. doing this thing with Tommy tomorrow. Stopping the scatterbrain is when yeah. you realize you're meditating. Yeah. For the first time. Being able to actually focus on that and say, my, my thoughts are going crazy is the first step to meditation. That is, yeah. I mean, because you're realizing. Self-realization is the whole key to it. Um, breathing is another part to it. Taking the time to do something good for yourself uh, because definitely what I've seen too lately is there's a lot of mental unwellness going around. The entire country, this the, right. the United States of America, the it's whole world fucking is fucking crazy. The United States of America specifically it's is a loony. Fucking day. crazy, yes. Yeah, if you if you judge if you're like going the, on the basis the of the boobies like, have left the hatch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If it's you go fucking... by the basis of what, uh, like, say, um, Indian culture would consider a healthy mind. <sighs> Nobody here qualifies. Uh -uh. Nobody in this country qualifies as no. having a healthy mind. You know, everybody's just obsessed with possessions and they're attached right. to this body and they're attached to their desires around them and they're just gluttonous. They're Attachments, just, period. Yeah, just give me more, Mental, more, 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 physical. more. I want it now, right. too. Like, it's not just like, oh, I need stuff. It's like, I need stuff now. Right. And it's like, oh, bro, that's not okay to act that way. Mm -mm. Uh, and I'm guilty as hell of that, you know, which is what started a lot of this. You, know, like you start realizing all these where's the patience yeah well you start what are you doing right what's uh what am i doing with my life if i'm just going to sit around acting like a spoiled brat and wanting all these things right. and immediate gratification um you're right. just living in hell that's living in hell Should you're we never get into the social dilemma since you just mentioned immediate gratification yeah let's get into that's the social what it dilemma. is that's what it is manipulative technology yeah. makes us all want instant gratification and we're all sick in the head because we need constant validation for fucking everything. Oh, yeah. Like you, you took the biggest dump or whatever the fuck. You need constant. Send it to your buddy. Right, through it, Instagram. Hey, Check out how big my dump is. Look at this, dude. Whoa. Uh, That's it, too. It looks like a sandworm from Arrakis. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, it's uh, that the the social media thing is is a terrible, terrible addiction. And talking about friggin' addiction, it's hard. I have I, to well, keep I've my seen phone you. away from I've me. seen you too. Yeah, it's what's really weird is the moment that you're on there. Yeah, I've not been on there for a while, and I could tell that you haven't been on there for a while. Oh yeah, it's like you go on there, you validate somebody's whatever, check your friends out look at music or whatever you do, and then you find yourself, like you said, the moment that you go on, your heart rate goes up. Yeah. And then what are you looking for? You don't know. Right. You, you don't, don't know. know what you're looking uh -uh. for. You just think, I'll just keep scrolling, and there'll be something there, right? right. There's going to be something. That you have to give a thumbs up. Yeah. that I'm. There's going to be some great video that's going to make me laugh, or I'll right. see one of my friend's posts that, that, that I can, you know, agree or disagree with, or what I, I don't even, it's... It's just an addiction. It's, that's an addictive tendency that you and you, you you look at your phone just to just to get a little dopamine rush, just right. to get a little. It's uh, it's a it's a slot machine in your pocket is what it is. Right. It's literally it it functions on all the same levels that the slot machines are functioning on. 
plus it can send you notifications to check in on your slot machine. The moment somebody tags you in a picture or whatever, you have to go and see what that picture is. Oh, yeah. You know, I don't have any of the notifications turned on. I can't tell what's going on with my social media account unless I'm logged into it. Right. Me too. I turned all of my shit off. Yeah. Screw that, dude. And then now I don't even now I only post. Right. Like I'm post and get out kind of guy. Like I don't look at a single like I don't look at a single thing anyone's posted. Don't do it. Just get in post promote your show run like hell run as fast as you can out of that box um that's my personal it's a double-edged sword though because you're yeah. in there posting your stuff yeah you have don't to you get... have to check on your stuff to see if anybody liked your stuff i don't care if anybody liked it or not it's like it's it it's you about... don't check to see if your post got out to everybody that you wanted it to get out to no i do check that stuff right like so the space break but i can go directly to my page right, and i right. can go to the advertisements where i'm paying to advertise and promote the instead show instead of looking at what and people can, are actually saying yeah i can look at my analytics that way right and then i don't care about the comment sections and i don't care about the likes i just care about how many link clicks i was able to pay for and how much it cost me per link click that's what i'm interested in right anything else is irrelevant to me and what my friends are doing on facebook and instagram and Twitter and stuff like that. I'm not. I can't do it. I can't. I'm not. I'm not okay with the way my body and my brain responds right. when I start doing that because I'm aware of it. I'm. I, I, it, I'm too aware of it. It's and a strange anxiety. It's a huge anxiety thing, right? Yeah. And um. And then you're. And then you're going back for more. Right. You're going back for more. And then or like, um. One of the one of the things the, the worst things I could possibly do is go on and comment on somebody's post because then I know. I know, A, all the words that I said, right, in that comment. And now that sentence or two sentences that I said related to the comment, that's looping through my head all day long now. Just the one response that I had. It's like, right. well, did I respond well? Did I say everything right? Let me go double check and make sure that sentence is the way it's looping in my head so I know that I said the right sentence, I said the right thing the right way. And you go back in and check it again. Uh, someone responded to you. They disagree with your, what you're saying. It makes you analytical about yourself. You're throwing yeah. yourself under a microscope constantly. Yeah. And it's like, why? Uh, because you're in this public forum. Right. And you're doing this, um, you're doing this game of like acceptance and, and, and denial of, 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 I don't know, friendship or like. Uh, pseudo. Pseudo friendship, right? Yeah. Um, it's, it's really perverse. And it's just one of those things that kind of happened and it was a great, it's a great idea, right? It's like communism, right? It looks good on paper, man. We can keep in touch with all my buddies. I can see pictures and videos of what my friends and family have been up to. And like, kind of like it lets you, um, it lets you stay, uh, aware of your world a little more. Right. And, and even though we all live at a distance and, but that's not what it ended up being. Mm -mm. It's not what it ended up being. It ended up being this trap, this slot machine, this addictive, this addictive mechanism that you're not even, I don't even get, I, I mean, I have so many friends on the. It's a soapbox for manipulative tendencies. Yes. Big time. Big time. I don't even see who my, what my family's up to. I see what people are like forcing in my face. Right. Uh, it's it's not even I'm not even learning anything about people mm -hmm. anymore. I th it's that lie that you tell yourself where you're like, oh, well, I'm keeping in touch with people. It's important to keep in touch with people. Call that motherfucker. Call him. Right. I like this thing. Right. This podcast is right. amazing for me. It, it opened my eyes to the fact that I don't communicate with people. Right. I do now. But I wasn't before this podcast. I wasn't. I was incapable. I was incapable of listening to a person while we we're having a conversation. I was always that. I was always waiting to say my next thing. I was always. I was like lining up and up to you know waiting in the. Uh, I'm trying to. There's a baseball metaphor in my head that I can't pull out. But uh, yeah, just, line up. But yeah, the line. You know, I got it lined up, ready to go. So that right. when you're done saying your thing. Boom. Right. comes right out of my mouth, and it's like, but I'm not listening to what you're saying. I know the topic that you're talking about, right. and I have something I can relate to that, as opposed to just absorbing the information you're saying and saying, right. cool. It's almost a form of acting. Yeah. You know? Big time. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've forgotten uh, how to interact with each other. That's one thing that I think that social media has done as well. It's, it's, it's put everything instantaneously at attainable. Uh, constant validation for everything that you do, but such social disconnect that we've uh, we've forgotten how to talk to each other. Oh yeah, we text. 
and the and the text in all caps. I fucking hate that shit because you never know exactly what how the text is supposed to be is, emphasized. Right. And me being old school and shit and from letter writing and picking up the phone and everything, I text. I'll actually say the shit out loud. Yeah. And say, okay, should that be an exclamation point? <laughs> what type of emoji should that so they're not going to get the wrong fucking idea? Oh, yeah. I try to throw a little smiley face like thing the word at dude. the end of everything. Dude has many different forms. Yeah. I'm like, dude. <laughs> dude. You know, there's there's different different ways. It's With texting. Yeah. Three three exclamation points, or it's we've forgotten how to communicate. We have. Oh yeah, it's really fucking weird. Yeah, we we've lost that. Nobody writes letters anymore. Yeah, they don't. See, I come from that old school where uh, Christmas or birthdays, my parents would always make me write thank you notes, thank you letters, and shit to everybody, and writing your grandparents letters and stuff. The thank you note means the world. Like, um, right. I went out and did um, some work uh, for my buddy Mark Broughton with Foundry. Did you ever keep letters? Do you have letters from, from people that, that no. you don't have any, any anything in your scrapbook or whatever, of letters of somebody like family or whatever that meant anything? I throw all everything away. Do you? I, um, I'm a fucking hoarder. I am. <laughs> I, I, see, my mom's a hoarder, and so I am a hoarder. Right. And so as a, just a, you know, it's, it's therapy for that. I to throw, throw shit I away. I throw everything away. Right, right, right. Because like, otherwise I'd just be like hanging on to everything for no reason, and right. it's like throw it all away, dog. Like I'm actually getting rid of, like I was saying before, right, I'm getting rid of all my like Star Wars toys and stuff like that that I grew up collecting, and I don't need any of that shit. I don't need any of it. It's just got to go. It's like it's like an anchor that's holding me to this world. Um, it's 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 <sighs> useless plastic. Right, I get it, I get it, I get it, but I don't get it. God and it. <laughs> as um, a good Star Wars toy collector as well, bro, I'm yeah. kind of like, Ugh. yeah, it's you can come for everything except for my fucking lightsabers. You ain't taking those. The Falcons are the ones that I'm having a hard time. Uh, I got my master replica lightsabers, man. Yeah. Oh fuck, I got Luke and Vader's, bro. Yeah. With polycarbonate blades, they're dueling sabers. That's awesome. Fuck, those would be the things I can't, I just can't get rid of. I probably won't get rid of these guys over here. Right. Because they've been on camera for the show fucking since a, the dude. beginning. I'll probably keep them. They'll go to the next place with me. A fucking Chewy? Chewy might stay, I don't know. I might keep Chewy too. The fucking coffee table book I gave you for your birthday. Yeah. The books, I'm not getting rid yeah. of books. Yeah, those, those books are always travelable. Yeah, books are. I, I'm keeping my books. Right. And I'm keeping my the toys. I get it. Equipment. I get it. I get it. Because shit to dust. <laughs> it is right. <laughs> but it's like the rest of it is just a burden. It's, Dude, I it's had all a burden. All of the fucking micro machines. Did you? All of them. That was a fleet of fucking about 150 Star Wars vehicles, all little tiny motherfuckers like this, right? Yeah. Yeah, dusting all those cocksuckers all the time, dude. No, uh-uh. no. It's if it's not this, if it's not this creative space, like it, these cameras and these computer and these like switchers and stuff like that. Like, I need this stuff to do this art, right? I'm okay with keeping paintbrushes. The whole thing of collecting it was was that what was making you happy at the time? Yeah, it made me happy at the time. Right. Right. And one and, and there's also that other thing where it's like, well, one day these things will be valuable. Well, right. now See, that's I need I money, too, right? Right. So it's like, when am I going to need money more than I need money now? Well, yeah, I and mean, most of the people that are out there collecting those things right now don't have the fucking money to collect them. Yeah, so, well, there's stores that'll buy them and shit. Right. We've already looked it up. Yeah, but still, it's, you don't you get ripped off. It's like taking your guitars to fucking guitar center. Ooh, uh, did I say that? I'm sorry. I was going to throw them away. So. What? <laughs> I, I was going to, yeah, I was just going to go donate them. And no, then, no, and no, no. Like, we can sell those. You got, you got Star Wars stuff you want to throw away, call me. Right. Um, yeah, because it's just. with a big old box. Yeah, it's part of the, it's part of the, um, it's part of the attachment game. It's part of the eightfold path that I'm trying to walk. Right, right. Even keeping all this studio equipment is, yeah, is keeping enough. myself attached to this plane of existence. <laughs> you know, it's right. like I'm still here creating art instead of just sitting in the dirt. <laughs> and Wearing a it, saffron robe and having a rice bowl, and that's it. Right. I mean, I get it. I get it. The whole uh, disconnection from from personal objects and personal things that, that are the the soul fillers. Yeah. To coin a phrase. That fucking shit's hard to do, dude. It is. It's not easy. It's not going to be easy for me. I mean, I, mean, I, I haven't physically I gotten rid of them yet. 
instruments because I look at instruments as a, as a uh, like guitars and stuff. That's a that's, well, that's a, a paintbrush as well, right? Right. It's an, absolutely that. it's art. Yeah. Um, but all the little. All little knickknacks, st- all the swords, all up and down my my hallways. Right, and shit. I get that type of shit too, man. It's gotta like, go. It's gotta go. God damn it, Jason. Yeah, it's all gotta go. I I, I don't need any of it. I don't need any. Every time of it. we do this, you get my brain spinning. Um, that's what I do all day, right? right. I'm like I'm constantly trying to fix myself because no. I'm so broken and. Uh, should I call uh, you a weak lily yeah. liver pussy yeah. like everybody else? That's what you should do, right? <laughs> no. I, I get it, man. I mean, um, yeah, so it's I'm always so trying to hard make to let better. go of some of that stuff, though. Isn't it? It really is. It hurts. I mean, you even found yourself when you're trying to let go of it looking at it. Do I really need this? Do I? You don't. You don't need anything. No. You don't. It's a distraction from what, yeah, it's a distraction from true peace, is what it is. Right. It's an attachment to your being on this plane of right. existence. That's an illusion. That's not real. <laughs> None of this is actually like means anything or is real. It's a pacifier. Yeah, it's a pacifier. That's great. That's a great metaphor for it's it. Fucking pacifier. Right? And the longer you keep yourself attached to letting go of it, right? I mean, you're gonna die, right? Right. So you're gonna lose it eventually. Right. You don't get to keep it. Unless you're like the pharaohs, yeah, all that shit in a big pyramid. What a what a horrible horrible way, you know. You're <laughs> right. just so obsessed with existence with that you everything you just right. bring take it all with you. Can't let anything mm. go. You're, even your body's going to be preserved forever, right. forever. What's why what forever? I think pulling the brain is that the, real? Pulling the brain through the nose is pretty awesome. It is pretty awesome. That's, that's the way to do it, you know? It keeps the face intact. <laughs> it keeps the face intact, It right. makes you pretty. Get little jars with all your organs in there. It's crazy, right? It's pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, but yeah, that's, it's, that's, that's it obsession. right there. That, that's an obsession right there. I mean, yeah, they, they thought uh, they would have all that shit for the afterlife. But we've never lost that as, as yeah. a society as a whole. We yeah. still think like the pharaohs. You know, where we want to take everything, all of our world. I mean, people would be buried in their fucking cars. Oh, yeah. You know, it's it's that's a that's a bizarre one trying to let go of everything that we've accumulated. But you're right. As you get older and everything and you realize that you are at some point going to pass, shuffle off this mortal coil. And all you're doing is leaving a huge pile of uh, shit that no right. one wants. <laughs> they don't want it. Right. And it's there. That's really weird because my mom was just talking to me about uh, the will and everything because my mom's getting up there too. And uh, hopefully and absolutely positively she's going to have a shit ton more years. She's going to live to be in her hundreds. Um, She was asking me what do I want of all of her material shit, basically. (laughs) And a couple paintings and two chairs. Yeah. You know? Um, but it's still one of those things that I'm at the same time thinking, fuck, all right, eventually I'm going to have to get rid of those too. Yeah. The only thing I want is my, my dad has a beautiful library of right. gold books. leaf books. My mom's got books too. That's, that's the main thing that I wanted is the yeah. books. And yeah. I got an amazing, uh, esoteric and metaphysical book collection already. Yeah. But there's a few of them that she's been holding on to that, that I will, will get, um, it's weird to talk about during when she passes. Yeah, um, it's real. Yeah, it's it's strange. I had her uh, lawyer call me the other day just to to, to to fill me in that hi, I'm I'm we'll be handling your mom's will and whatever. Yeah, strange. Oh, strange I, to even talk about. Uh, you know, I I because I don't think about it. I mean, I I know. A lot of us say that we're not afraid to die, but of course it's one of our biggest fears because it hampers everybody from living. Yeah. Um, you have to accept that you're just made out of right, dirt. Right. Right. Dirt grows the food. You eat the food. You turn the food into a human being. Soylent green. And then you poop it out. It becomes fertile soil again. Makes more food. You right. eat that. It's just a cycle of you're you're just dirt. You're just this collection of food. Why do I think of South Park every time? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, like the circle of life. That's what it is. That's what it is. Um, 
So it's the poo I've, that feeds the antelope. Yeah, it's, it is. <laughs> I uh, I had to have that that conversation with my dad. You know, um, me and my dad get real, and um, he's like, "Your fucking mom can't deal with these." issues right he goes so i need to give you the power to pull the plug on me he goes because you fucking will <laughs> you know he goes i i want you to so you have the power of attorney over your father yeah and um how did and that what make, to do with his body how and, did that make you feel uh it was a that was a deep one you know we were on acid when we were having that conversation oh jesus and uh that's <laughs> what we talk about when we're tripping right life and death and <laughs> right right um it's it, it's also apparent you know it's like this whole birth death cycle right um when i'm on acid i don't feel like i'm alive or i'm dead no. we were watching a thing and someone was uh someone was bringing up bucket lists and it was the most amusing thing to me right because they're like oh before i die i gotta do all this stuff and it's like you get another shot on the other end right. you know you, you lose this body and you get a new one and and try do a whole new spectrum of a of, of bucket list whatever you you know you, it's it's endless experience or um what's it called i was watching sadguru you you listen to sadguru on youtube a little He's bit amazing um so one of the questions someone asked was um how do we fun, uh, form our society to be uh, a system where everyone can have every experience right like i'm i, I want to experience life and have every possible experience I can have while I'm in this body. And he just laughs and goes, that's a, a ridiculous concept. He goes, that's not what you, we already have that, right? This isn't Sadhu, this is me now, right? So, so we already have that system. If you think about Brahman and Atman and, right. and the cycle, um, it's, it's, we are doing that, right? But it's just, you get to experience this life and then you get to experience that life and then you get to experience that life, but you get to experience them all at once. Mm -hmm. Time is also an illusion. It's just a fourth dimensional concept. Right. Uh, and technically all time happens at once, right? And it's just, we experience it linearly. Um, but uh, we're doing that. Right, you're just the Atman of Brahman. It's an offshoot of what Brahman would be like, you know, say God or whatever. It's mm -hmm. it's everything, and uh, and we are just a shoot of everything. Well, and we you all get to know, experience it. He, he's a cow. He's a cow. Uh, yeah, it's Brahma is. It's, yeah, it's cow. Yeah, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, when I do my yoga, man. I my house. Uh, is done up with tons of uh, Hindu and Buddhist stuff, statues, paintings, all sorts of. My girls just got a, a, a thing with them. I bet the energy is fantastic. It's pretty awesome. We have a really bitchin' painting of the Dalai Lama. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was done by this artist from New York, man. The, whole, the background's yellow. The Dalai's got. He's wearing like a hoodie, and got an earring and stuff. I have to show it. It's it's bizarre. Yeah. Most people are like, "Is that the Dalai Lama?" I'm like, yeah, it's the Dalai Lama, but. Uh, Ganesh is. Uh, I know you like Ganesh a lot. Dude, helps you overcome all obstacles. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I. Uh, yeah, I have him in thought uh, a lot. Has helped. Yeah. Multiple times to overcome things. Um, well, that's one of the beauties of uh, Hinduism right. is is they have a god for everyone. They have right. a god for everything, right? And they're well aware that. A lot of them like they milk. Create those gods. A lot of them like milk. Yeah, the gods like milk. <laughs> the gods okay. like milk. Yes, they will sip milk. Okay. Uh huh. I have the Bhagavad Gita lined up right. on my reading list, um, but of course I'm doing. I'm still. I mean, the Bible is huge. Thank George Harrison for that book. The Bhagavad Gita. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love. Uh, I, I'm. I'm very looking forward to it. I read like the first chapter real quick. I couldn't help myself. Need to do an uh, autobiography of a yogi. I have that on the list. I got to so buy that. So good. For if do it. Do you do audiobooks? I don't. I read. Because they have Ben Kingsley uh, reading it too. Oh, do they? It's, it's yeah, he played um, Gandhi. Bro. He played Gandhi, right? Yeah. It's pretty sick, dude. Yeah. So you get the, the correct pronunciations of everything. Because there's a lot of the Indian pronunciations that. that See, no, I am interested in that. Right. Big time. Right. Because, uh, yeah, I'm very much a white person born in the suburbs and right. bullshit, right? It's like, I, 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 I'm so not cultural uh-uh i the bhagavan gita yeah uh, i mean it, i took me a while to know the exact pronunciation of that one too bro uh, 
A lot of people would not be able to pronounce that word. Yeah. When you look at it, you're like, okay, what? What is that? But I, mean, I watch enough lectures where but they, they e mention it. Eastern philosophy, I mean, just the fact that we're even talking about this, a lot of people will be like, oh, what about Jesus? You know? Yeah, I love Jesus. Right. And uh, in, uh, in Indian philosophy, he's looked at as, as another... Uh, Buddha. Right. Yeah, that's what he was. Right, as another guru. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing, too, in India. Uh, people go and search for their gurus when the, the, their guru is, is already within you. Yeah, that's what it is. That's the whole thing. Guru, guru is like looking means, at a mirror. Guru in Sanskrit means remover of darkness. Uh oh. Um, so that's basically what you're doing when when you're meditating and doing yoga or whatever you're doing to uh, shuffle off your ego. Yeah. Is you're trying to remove the darkness. That's I do a purification ritual um, every day before I start my meditation. And it's a bunch of breathing uh, exercises and also um, chanting mantras and stuff like that. Right. Uh, but no, it's, it feels, it's very, very, um, uplifting right. when you do the, the purification ritual. You got any uh, singing bowl? I have a couple singing bowls. I know. Uh, I've actually been getting into that as well. Um, tones killer. I could sit there and listen to it for hours. Oh yeah. Dude, it just, it, it resonates with your right. whole body. And the things that that's those singing bowls, especially the larger ones that they do to like like water. You My mom's see got a water. big crystal. Oh yeah, the water is it's Dude. crazy the vibrations and stuff. What it does. Yeah, and you're seventy percent water yourself. Right. right. You're sitting there doing that's that. That's why it affects. You're us. vibrating. Right. When those bowls are spinning, you are vibrating with them, and um, and I think that's why they hit me so hard. I got the second I discovered them, and I I I was just like, what is this? You know, like. I need some of these things in my life. And like my one of my favorite playlists that I play every day is the Tibetan Bulls playlist on Spotify. Right, right, That's right. That's what I meditate to. Uh, it's it's fantastic because it's so, it's so much empty space. Yeah, I got one that's like uh, three hours long that's Tibetan Bulls to, to clear negative energy out of your house. Yeah. And even from yourself. I mean, and the vibrations are, are, are crazy. It's, uh, it's another thing that's looked at is... Uh, yeah, Eastern philosophy is looked at by Western folks. I mean, it's it is accepted a lot more now, but it's still looked at by evangelical people as uh, shamanism and bullshit and stuff. And yeah. yoga is looked at as uh, something that tree huggers do. <laughs> yeah, and yoga just means union. You right. know, that's you becoming one with the world around you. Right. Uh, it's it's all it is. Anything that's wrong with your body, it can fix too. Oh yeah, that's the thing that people don't don't get if right. you're broken you're feeling worn out your back's fucked up or whatever you stretch and do some yoga man it's gonna it's gonna affect you and put you back into the place that you need to be yeah it does every uh, i do my yoga every thursday and uh i got you and zach throne to thank for that now do you yeah, oh, i haven't seen zach throne in forever i need you guys to have you guys him on the, the podcast ones. oh i would watch that one too man. he's such I, a great character because of you guys i'm still doing yoga and it's been close to seven years now that i've yeah. been doing it i bet well, you since, feel great too it's awesome seven years in it's awesome I, I got myself a, a, a killer mat with the alignment lines oh cool yeah so i can get my asanas right oh, okay I'm getting getting but i got my uh my, my heels to touch on downward dog finally oh nice right so there's them hamstrings oh dude brutal if i don't do it for two days i feel it yeah you know everything's like okay we're gonna go back to the way that we were which is you know that's that's the whole thing of uh trying to do it and make it a constant uh i go back to south park again it's the discipline <laughs> yeah that's what it is it, it's discipline discipline is happiness man it, it is the more disciplined right. and the more focus i have on my life and the more energy i focus in myself and um just the the personal space and energy that's going to be around me for the day uh, I, I realize that those are the best days what is my teacher i because i have uh, rodney yees who i do is my my uh my yoga instructor and uh I mean, homeboy looks like Bruce Lee. He's, and he, he's an old cat now. I think Rodney's early 60s or whatever. Yeah, you can um, do yoga all the way till you're about to die. Right. But they do. Baba yeah. G and all of those. I mean, what else are you going to do with your body? Right, you're going to sit right. there and all let All the Indian rot? gurus are, are like live to be in their hundreds and stuff like that. The uh, thing that he says in 
I think is a, is a, a thing to think about is the focus on the quiet, easy breath. Yeah. If more people could learn to do that, and I think there could be more happiness. Um, yeah, you you got to uh, learn that. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead, man. That brain thing upstairs. Right. It's just like your cell phone, right? It's like you need to turn the notifications off. Right. You need to turn them all <laughs> off. You don't need to know what that computer, this 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 biological computer in your head. Mm-hmm. It's, I'm not interested in what it has to say. Mm-mm. And it finally stops bugging me. Like I just go, dude, I don't care. Okay. You can get there, sit there and be paranoid, say all these ridiculous things and have all these thoughts all day long. I'm ignoring you. Okay. I'm ignoring you, brain. Focused on what I'm doing in the moment, and I, I, you're not in charge anymore. And my brain hates that, right? That's the thing, too, focus. Focusing, uh, um, taking time to be quiet with yourself. Yeah. Because uh, we're always running to stand still. Yeah. Constantly. I mean, we need the, the bigger, better, whatever. Running to stand still, I like that. Yeah, we're running to stand still, man. Try to get it all done so you right. can enjoy your life. And it's like... No, man. Enjoy washing the dishes. Right. Right. There is there's that a is meditation. Your life. There is a meditation to that. Yeah. There's, that is my meditation. Right. That's washing, part of my practice. Right. Um I do the I do the dishes every day. When my oatmeal's cooking, right. I'm cleaning dishes. Cooking that oatmeal, there's yeah. a meditation in that. Oh yeah, it's a ritual. It's, it's it a happens ritual. right exactly. after, you know, I work out and I meditate and I make some oatmeal and right. I clean the kitchen. And I love cleaning the kitchen. And then, you know, I sit down and, and I got my oatmeal and I start reading. Right now I'm f- like 500-something pages into the Bible, which is, I, it was rough getting there. I and mean, now I'm really starting to enjoy it. But I'm still stuck in the Old Testament. So it's like, it's a lot of um, just names l- being listed. And you know what I mean? It's like now we're, once you get deeper in. Isn't Josiah like, begot. Yeah, exactly. Right. And they list it. Ezekiel, Ezekiel begot. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm like on the story of David right now. Oh, right on. And the right King on. Saul, you know, the first king of Israel. Right. And all that shit. And it's like, oh, this is a killer war story. It now sure I feel is. like I'm reading these, um, some of these old history books oh, that dude. I like to read. God sent out the Israelites to murder a lot of different troops. Holy crap. There was a the, lot. God was a vengeful God in the early days. It, uh, he sent his, he, the, the, the Israelites out to, to fight a lot of different troops that didn't believe in him. Yeah. And it even says, it even says directly in the Bible, uh, and evil was upon them. And that's referring to Israel attacking other people, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, we're the evil attacking, you know, uh, the Hippolytes, the Hematites, there's a bunch of Philistines, the Philistines. Oh yeah. That's where I'm at right now is the Philistines. All right. The Israelites were doing a lot of warring. Mm -hmm. And King David was like the leader of the Israelites for a long time after he, uh, smote, uh, old, uh. Okay, here we go. Probably King Saul. No, 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 no. I don't know. I'm I'm in the middle of the story oh, of David right oh, now. Oh, David's there. David's I, gonna have to to smite Goliath. Oh yeah, he's just smite. He smoked Goliath. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm at I'm on. It's Samuel one is the book, right? right. So he smoked Goliath, and then uh, the first king of Israel, uh, King Saul. He used to play for he Saul. He was like he was like, yo, here's my daughter. Right. I dig you. You're awesome. Right. You're gonna be my homie. And then for some reason, you know, as kings do, they get twisted and paranoid and. And he's just like, I don't trust that dude anymore. Right. Let's kill him for no reason. He, he was just awesome. Uh, and then uh, he ran away. And no, he that's battles. where I'm at right now. He that's where I'm at right now. So he's going to probably come back. He has to. He's going to get, he's sending out right, he's people king. to kill him. David becomes king of Israel. So. Is he? Oh, yeah. spoiler alert. Oh, sorry, man. <laughs> it's sorry. been so long since I read the Bible. You know, it's like, uh, no, I, I don't think I ever that's, really that's the read old, it all Testament. the way It's the Old Testament, right. yeah. Right. Uh, and everyone's like, you're supposed to read the New Testament first. And like, literally, like, it's no. not, the words that come out of the people's mouth is, um, that's how we it's, it's that's how we brainwash you into believing in Christianity. Right, is you you read the New Testament. That's the stuff that's going to get you in, and then you can catch up with the Old Testament. And I was like, I'm just going to read it in order because I'm not going to believe in your belief structures. You know, like Jesus was awesome, and I I love all these stories, and um and there really are like um humanity is just a collection of stories, right? right? And so these these stories really bring us moral purpose and, and they bring us, uh, written by men though. Mostly that's his well, story. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, back in the day it was just 
so brutal. Um, like when I finished the Quran, uh, before I started the Bible, right. Everything in the Quran was like a woman is directly half of a man. You right. know, he's like, if you need someone to vouch for you, or like if you need someone to be like a witness for a legal thing, you can have a man do it, or you need two women to do it. Two right? women, right. Always that. It's always been that way. Right? right. It's just because we have more physical strength than them. So it's like, I can beat the shit out of you. So you're less than me. And it's just, it is barbaric, but it's, that's how that's how the world was, right? That's how it it, it was. It and people still have that attitude. It still kind of is. Yeah, <laughs> it, well, it's it's at the certain point spots, now. Certain spots in the yeah. world are still exactly that way. Oh, still. big time. Yeah. Well, they're still functioning on. Um, it's a, it's a it's functioning on power, right? right. So it, it's not even a man or a woman thing. It's it's a um, you're weaker than me, and I'm going to take advantage of you. And right. that's all it is. So even if it's uh, if, even if these barbaric people come across weaker civilizations, they take over the entire you know all the men in the civilization, right? It's like they were weaker than us. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And that just goes down the line with women and children and animals. It's like I can take advantage of these things, right. so I will. And it's just like, well, that's not okay. No, that's not okay at all. Uh, you should be loving all these. Uh, beings that are on the planet and not taking advantage of anything for your own selfish gains. No, no, but no. People, selfish games have taken way yeah. over, bro. Yeah. We don't think like, we don't think like that anymore. Everybody's, uh, what's in it for me? How can I make a buck? Yeah. Oh, is this the last endangered whatever? Let's kill it and sell it to China. <laughs> Literally. Literally. Yeah. That's what they want. Right. Um, even in like a, uh, like a rhinoceros the, I horn, stuff. rhinoceros horn going to make my wiener larger. Oh yeah. That's let's, the terrible it's one. The last rhino. Let's kill it. They're gone too. Right. Like if, we just if lost it's a choice it, between lost. the last rhino or a large wiener. People are going to choose the large wiener. Yeah. What was it? Black rhinos. They're right. gone. Right. Then we just lost the last one. Um, which is sad, but it's, it's we, ha we have to happens. kill everything. We just have to kill everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're just this force of nature, right? That has come out, uh, on top in the evolutionary game. Right. And now we're just nature speeding the process up of whatever the fuck it was getting at. It's kind of what it looks like in, uh, from an outside perspective. If you just take a step back and you just see these tumors that we build, these giant cities all over the planet, um, we're just, uh, we're this colonizing species, right. um, that, that's just, overgrown everything it's I, like it's like um red ants i think ants are smarter or um well ants are more zen right ants know that they're an ant and they're happy to be an ant and they're not like uh is, does my life have meaning what's the purpose of being an ant they don't have those questions right they're right. just like i'm gonna be a fucking <laughs> ant i'm gonna get that leaf and then i'm gonna die great great right and like only humans have that complication of um meaning of their desires right we're like what what does this all mean right like our brain just functions it just got a little too powerful to where uh we developed right the was the neocortex it's just one layer of brain cells over the top uh and that's where all like the art and the history math all this basically all this all of the human um creations right. all of our technologies and all of our um just inventions that have come out of the human mind. That's all from the neocortex. It's all just from that one layer of brain cell that added on top of your chimpanzee brain, basically, right? You're like 99% chimpanzee. That just that little even, extra I added mean, the neocortex, and they, now we're insane. Well, with chimpanzees, too, even they will help each other out over yeah. us. Oh, yeah. Doing that. They still have that in them that they'll help their own out. Oh, and they have war and right, and, and right. It's crazy if you watch, um, if you watch like primate and and um. Hey, I've seen Planet of the Great Apes. Apes. So, yeah, like <laughs> so. Um, I was watching a whole thing about them, um, taking a fruit tree. Some David Attenborough. Yeah, uh, it was. Uh, I forget what type of uh, uh, monkeys or they were, but uh, they were so aggressive. Oh, I've seen it and firsthand in Costa Rica, dude. Have you? Oh yeah. Dude, they went to war with each other yeah. in this documentary I watched. They got everything that we have, all the uh, um, the bad things of society, bullying, uh, greed, uh, I'm bigger than you, which is the yeah. bullying thing. Um, which is really just nature. Right. That's a, that's a nature thing, Survival too. of the fittest. Yeah, it's, uh, it's how it works out in the wild, right? right? It's like uh, lions don't eat the fastest gazelle, right? No. They eat the old, weak one. 
that's the one that they go for. The right. one in the back can't keep up with the rest of the herd. They always go for the they always go for the the one that's lagging. It can't really keep up with the rest. Or the, or the babies. Or the babies, right? It's the same thing. It's weaker, <laughs> right? It's easy food. It's easy prey. Right. I'm gonna go take that one out. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that's really. Um, I don't think we'll ever that's, get rid that's of that instinct. Everywhere. That's, that's everywhere in the animal kingdom. That's everywhere in the animal yeah, kingdom, that's too. That's nature in right. general, right? right? Like even trees the ocean. do it. Yeah, you're right. They'll cover They'll cover other plants. I think Rush has a song. Do they? Yeah. About trees killing? Yeah, it's called the trees, bro. Oh, okay. Unrest in the forest, trouble with the trees. The nature's wanting more sunlight. Yeah. And the, uh, oh, no. It's trouble in the forest. Shit, we have to listen to it. Now we got to listen to some Rush. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Trouble in the forest is unrest with the trees for the maples want more sunlight and the oaks ignore their pleas. Uh, there it is. Right. There it is. But at the end of that song, man comes along and makes them equal with hatchet, axe, and saw. Yeah. And we, we, we are the... Fucking Rush, man. You got to love Rush, bro. We are the great uh, equalizer. Right. We just... It, it, it did not matter if you're an alpha predator or an insect. It was just like, you're all bugs to us, and we're right. going to kill you all, and we're going to take this land, and we're going to pilfer it for its resources, and then we're going to frack the mountain, and then we're going to move on to something else. And it's just like... Fracking. Fracking's yeah. going earth, making earthquakes in places that yeah. never had earthquakes. It's insane that they would even do such a thing, but... Uh, right. People are desperate for resources because of the sickness that we have, and... What the resource sickness? The sickness, yeah. The 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 sickness Fossil for fuels? desire. It's, it's just desire in general, right? right. Like we want to keep advancing, advancement, uh, just for the sake of it, and uh, and that's just leading to the destruction of everything around us. Right. Yeah. And it's it's funny because it's like the goal is happiness, right? Like we're we're literally all this all this destruction and all this this free market and just building infinite toys and faster phones and faster cars and destroying the rainforest and building more houses and slimming down how much it take land it takes to make as much food as possible right it's all in the this this attempt to create utopia on this planet right isn't right. it i mean we're just we're just going after it as hard mo- as we genetically can genetically modifying food yeah, right. because we have to. Right. Because there's not enough land space to grow food organically, and we can't risk the famines that used to happen. Right, like before the 1950s or whatever, it was just like, well, there might be a famine, and it just happened all the time because sh- the crop took a shit, bugs ate it all. It just wasn't, and we figured out all these ways to just consistently get a, a the product we need which is the food we can make it happen we can put uh, pesticides and and we can and actually g- genetically modified organisms are way better than some of the other things that we're doing because like if you're just trying to run basic organic farming you have to put I mean, I guess it, it wouldn't be considered organic no, if you're you using can't. pesticides. Right. But um, some sort of fertilizer. If you're not using. genetically modifying it, right? So they're taking what they're doing is they're taking genetics out of, say, like a flower. Right. That um, that the the pests in that specific area they they hate those flowers. They stay away from them. They don't eat them. They don't bother them. And they're just like, oh, so this flower puts off a scent or whatever it's putting off, right? And that the bugs stay away from it. Right. It's, it's a natural pesticide, and so they genetically modify the food to have that gene that keeps the bugs away from it. So then right. you don't have to spray it with pesticide, right? And the food grows consistently. Uh, but people go, oh, you're fucking with the genetics of the food. And it's like, well, you know, we changed a couple markers, man, you know, but it, uh, now we always have carrots <laughs> as opposed to like, I think carrots used to be white. And right. there was like a, a rare species of carrot that was orange. But Rainbow carrots are awesome, yeah. dude. Purple and white ones are we, yeah. we lost well, all no, we, we, the regular carrots, we did. And, yeah, we no. had, and we had to switch over to same the orange carrots, apples. and now orange same carrots are regular apples, carrots. Bro. Apples were the same thing. Apples were originally made, uh, uh, they came from one of the stands, um, Turkmenistan or somewhere like that, the yeah. first apple. And we brought them over here, uh, I do believe the first... Uh, orchard is in New Hampshire. Okay. The very first one from the 1700s. It's still there. And apples were originally made for booze. Oh, of course, right? Because nobody drank water. Everybody was afraid of water. Water is where you got sick. Yeah. So people were drinking booze. Because you got to boil it. Right. It's people were sanitary. drinking beer. People were drinking cider. They didn't understand uh, that there was bacteria in the water. Apples weren't even made f- to be sweet. 
Yeah. We modified them to be sweet. Yeah. Uh, same thing with bananas, too. Bananas is another thing that's been completely modified for, for human consumption. Yeah, everything that we eat right. is totally modified. I right. mean, it's definitely not what it was when it was like the the planet was was not filled with technology and we hadn't started farming. And we like, say, we're a nomadic species, right? right? None of the food that we eat now ever existed in any form like it does now. Back then when we were nomadic and, and you know, we were like Gat hunter, hunter gatherers, hunter -gatherers right? right? Um, it's just that's not... That's not the reality of the situation. No, not anymore. And it never will be. Mm -mm. It never will be. There's not this fantasy land of like, oh, we can just go backwards. And um, because I also, right, the consistency is the important thing. Right. We can't afford to have those famines anymore. We got eight plus billion people on this planet that we need to feed. And uh, and so it's like, well, we can't just because it was a f harsh winter, just go, well, we're going to lose a billion. Well, I know you're not a meat eater, but e even meat's taking a massive hit right now. Yeah. Massive hit. Because uh, I like a steak once in a while. Um, a ribeye, small ribeye, man, maybe about that big. It's going for 13 bucks. Oh, wow. I mean, beef, pork, uh, bacon, outrageously priced now. That's, yeah. that's pork bellies. It's always been way pricey. Uh, fish. I mean, any... Fish is a risky dead one. Dead protein. Too, because of the mercury levels and the radiation right. in the ocean. And right. Then, and it's like tuna, bro. My farm. favorite. That's my favorite thing to eat at sushi. And oh, tuna, yeah. tuna has got the most mercury yeah. out of all the fish. And that's the one I'm like, you can just chop the head off and the tail and I'll eat the whole thing right here. A little soy sauce. Yeah. But that's the, the worst one. Um... Salmon is now all farm raised, or they're trying to anyway. Yeah, um, they're starting to do that with tuna and stuff too. But yeah, the oceans are just—it's a disaster. We've completely destroyed our oceans. I mean, there's right. uh, there's there's four. Is it four of them? Giant islands that are just made out of trash. Right. It's just where the currents meet. You know, this this current's going this way and this current's going this way, and then they swirl around this big pool of trash on the planet, and it's like it just pushes all the trash to these central locations where currents uh, lock up, and it's just this spiraling island, spiraling island of trash. And there's four of them, five of them around the planet that are just, they're huge. They're miles and miles across. Seabirds are dying. Penguins are dying yeah. from feeding their, their youngs plastic. Yeah, they land. They think it's an island. And right. They land on it. They don't know any better. And then they're like, oh, I guess I'll harvest some of this stuff off this island and right. build a nest with these, uh, you know, plastic uh, soda can holders. And it's just like, no, man, that's, we, we can't be doing that anymore. There's just, it's, it's, it's gotten to a point, right? So we like... It, we went from this unstable system of, of food production to right. this oversimplification uh, of like basically taking chemical processing and, and turning it into edible substances that aren't really nutritious. Yes. Uh, they'll fill your tummy up uh, and then cover those things in plastic and then wrap that in plastic and then wrap that in a cardboard box and then wrap that in plastic. And it's just like, dude, that shouldn't be happening anymore. Like we were, we're smarter than that. And we know that that's bad, but uh, there's just the cheapest way to bang it out, right? So they just keep doing it that way because there aren't really regulations on Meeting it. Even with food packaging? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's just like, like, they just don't care, right? It's like, no. well, we'll make more money if we do it this way, so we're going to continue to do it this way because it's going to be more profitable as opposed to, you know, like... Some companies are actually trying to... Uh do that with with uh, food packaging and processing, where they're using uh, uh, they're reusing paper and, and and the cardboard products and whatever else. Yeah, you know, I mean, plastic is still going to be one of those things that yeah, plastic's going to be a tough one. It it's, is. It's one of those things that doesn't go away. It's such a fantastic substance. When you look at it, and if you look at it in an isolation chamber, and it's just like, look at this substance I created. It's well, called I plastic. It's like, that's a fantastic thing you just made there. That works so great. There's these live uh, channels on YouTube. I watch uh, Surfers of Bali all the time, and there's a uh, their show, uh, The Surf Spot, uh, called Impossibles, and one called Padang Padang. And whenever they show the, the tide, all you see floating are plastic water bottles. Gross. That seems to be the thing that's that's fucking up the oceans the most. Yeah, 
Well, there's so many of them. I got, I, I got off well, the plastic water bottles. Water's the next question. We're going to be fighting wars over water. Oh yeah, very I mean, soon. Mexico City, dude. You know, yeah. I mean, there's uh, what was the show on Netflix? There's a, a show on. It's just uh, documentary after documentary of explained, explained the water one that they did, talking about how they've been drilling deeper and deeper uh, for water in Mexico City, and it's like they're just they're just done. They're done. They, they, they. It's, There's it's, no water left in the aquifer. Yeah, the aquifers are they're dried up, uh, and they. Keep I know they had a huge deeper. one. There was a big one under Mexico City for. Yeah, that's where they were, got their water. And they just expanded too heavily, and they were just digging in harder and harder on that aquifer, and they're gonna sink the whole city. And they're gonna. The city is sinking. Right. It was explaining that in the right. thing. The city's sinking underneath them, and they're like, we got like five to ten years left and then we're going to have to import our water from somewhere because we won't have water from this aquifer it just won't be there right and they're not stopping right like they're not they well, and that's, that's the thing. That's we the don't, sad we don't thing stop. about humanity we right don't it's stop. like we know that fracking is no it's bro. bad we know we know we do all these uh shitty practices where we're messing the planet up and we know that it's bad and we don't search for any alternatives yeah i mean we've known fossil fuel is is bad for the longest time uh, and we had electric cars, and then uh, the, the the major car companies recalled them and destroyed them all. Yeah. You know about that, right? Um, we, I think, are, are permanent slaves to fossil fuel. Yeah. Because it's all over the world. We use it for everything. Oil products, too, man. I mean, we use it for cooking, whatever else. Well, it's, it's just... It's this century sugar. Right. 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 It's 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 become the trade, right? It was spices from India and then it was sugar cane right. and now it's oil, man. Salt. I mean they used to yeah. pay the Romans uh the soldiers got paid in salt. That's where the word salary comes from. Oh really? Yeah. That's a good little um, fact tidbit. So I mean Yeah, because spice was everything. Right. Spice was everything. Yeah. I mean S salt and sugar. Yeah. It still is, it was right? Everything. People are obsessed with their food. Right. I'm obsessed with food too. Yeah, I've let it go. I've let it all go, bro. Oatmeal and rice and vegetables. Oh my god, that sounds boring. It's boring, but I don't care about food anymore, <laughs> right, right? It's right. not a, so. The whole point of it is, you get on that loop where you're just like, there isn't a desire to eat well, rice food and vegetables. Food is kind of my music now. I mean, is I, it? I, oh well, I got the walk right. Yeah, so I told you I get a, I got a red and green curry paste, and then I'll throw uh, whatever veggies into the wok. And then uh, either the red, green is a lot spicier because green curry's got a... I prefer green curry. Whew, yeah. Cilantro and, and the, the, the green dragons, little lemongrass, galangal, all that other shit. Yeah. And then I throw coconut milk and let that stuff cook up, man. I've been doing lots of uh, Thai food on rice. But that's that's my music lately since we don't have shows or whatever. I get, I get the artist out in me when I'm in the kitchen. Okay. So that's... I definitely do... Still focus on food because it's an outlet. Yeah. You know. We'll have to trade well, I have to get some recipes for Oh you. dude, I'd be happy to. I uh I we, wanna do a food thing. Because we go to the night I would love to do that with you. Yeah. Totally. You have to come over. Because we go to the ninety nine market. I don't know if you know it's a Oriental market here okay. in town. Um and they got all sorts of produce that you've never seen and greens that you've never seen. So I just grab one of each, everything, and go, it's got to taste good, stir-fried. Yeah. That's how I look at it. Um, yeah, it's fun, right? Like you wood, get to go and pick Woodier mushrooms. I'm all about the shrooms now. Woodier mushrooms and the uh, button mushrooms where they come. It looks like a, a white little puff ball with all these little long shrooms. Like, it's totally killer. Yeah. Yeah, because I've been, like I said, I've been doing uh, uh, coconut milk as your friend. Okay. It's so good with the green curry or red curry, whatever. And yeah, now tofu. Now some coconut milk. So you, you, affer you like firm tofu? I don't like tofu. I'm not a tofu fan. No. It's got estrogen in it. Oh. I'm not trying to mess with my hormones. So. Why do you do that to me? <laughs> really? I mean, well, that's the, tr that's the, that's the really? nutritional facts of it, right? So. It's got hormones in it? It's got estrogen. It, it increases your estrogen levels. 
so I could have tofu m- moobs. I could touch my own if I had breasts. Well, I mean, if you ate tofu bricks all the time. No, right? but, but if, if you're eating it like... It's, a, a light amount of tofu is not going to affect you that much. It's just one of those things where I'm a crazy person, right? So I just, I cut out and I cut out and I cut out stuff. And then like, I've never been a fan of tofu. So when I cut the meat out, I didn't replace it with tofu. I just ate vegetables. I was right. just like, well, okay, I'll eat vegetables now. Do you guys do fish at all anymore? Well, yeah. We'll, I mean, we'll still eat meat, right? We'll still have, if, if someone's like making meat at a party we go to, okay, we'll eat it. Yeah. So you're not... We're not crazy about it. Adverse to chowing down. No, we're not nice. like, you don't take into consideration my diet. It's like... No, I do this for myself, and and I eat. So you're clean not adverse food. to to wiping out a T-bone. No, I would eat the fuck out of a steak right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all right, totally. Cool. Um, yeah, yeah. I just it's but it, the whole the whole game. Like I had a ba- a barbecue bacon cheeseburger with onion rings right the other day because I wanted. It. I was like, I'm really fiending for this. And instead of going, let me guess, uh, uh, Carl's. No, we went to. Um, I, I wanted I wanted to do that and but I was like I, I haven't done fast food in so long that I was just like don't you do that it. don't do that I mean Carl's is okay I guess uh, compared you want a good to like it's not, five it's not guys. McDonald's five guys a good burger five guys yeah I, I went to um it was actually like a a restaurant kind of place oh, right on, and right they on. make good burger uh, Sl- uh, Slater's fifty fifty it's right over here in Silverado and uh, and yeah I had a barbecue bacon cheeseburger because that's what I wanted I was I was doing. Some, some work with Buddy. and Do you consider that a cheat day? Yeah, that's cheat day. It's like, I mean, you can't just sit around eating bacon cheeseburger no. all the time, right? And then go, <laughs> no. I eat vegetarian. It's like, no, you don't. No, you, you eat bacon don't. cheeseburgers. Right. But it's like once a week or so, you, you and, and it's not like I have a day that's like on Sunday I can eat whatever I want. Right. It's just like if the situation occurs where someone's like, you know, put meat in front of me or... Yeah, okay. See, I wondered that's how that what was. I, that's what I'm eating today, then. Or I went out for sushi with my buddy. Right. right? Fuck yeah, I'm going to go eat sushi. But uh, but then it's like the, the rest of the week, of, you know, then I'm going to be good. Veggies. And veggies. Right. Yeah. Because it's it's about the way I feel, and it's about getting rid of that desire for anything. It's like when... Um, so, like, I allow... I, I, don't, I don't sit there and torture myself over it, but uh, it's it's like... I don't know, people are into their food so much and you get into this obsession like, I really want food. And it's like, oh, you might as well be saying I really want heroin as far as I'm concerned. Right, right. Um, because you're just, you're just desiring something that you don't currently have in your hands. And so you just want to get rid of those emotions, and those, those desires inside of you. And then it's like, um, but I don't torture myself, like I said. Like, I'm not going to sit here and and just fucking fiend all night for a, a bacon cheeseburger. It's like, I'll go get one. Who gives a shit? You know, I could use the protein. I'm a skinny guy. It's not going to kill me. It's not, uh, you know, but uh, the rest of the time I can be good. And then eventually, you know, I just won't care. Right. Like, I, I'm at the point right now where it's it's been a while. It's getting it out of your system. Yeah. I just I, And you just, you just slowly let that go on for a while. And then eventually you're just like, oh, it's been like three weeks and I haven't had any meat. And uh, cool. Yeah. Right. I just keep going, and eventually someone will serve some food in front of me that has meat, and I'll eat that, and then I'll continue my process. And you know what I mean? You can't just well, because of our last conversation, I got heavily into doing the veggie thing, and yeah, that's one reason we went out and got the electric walk. And uh, I tried, bro. I tried. I tried um, to do the not to to lay off coffee. I haven't fucking touched, can't see, do it, bro. I haven't touched coffee. Can't do it. I'd say I was doing chai tea for a while with my girl. Yeah, can't do it. I I had I I've had two cups of coffee today. Oh, have you? <laughs> yeah. I haven't done. Any, I haven't had anything at all today. Um, today I had oatmeal. That's that's a hard and one. And water. Coffee, coffee's a tough one. Yeah. I do water constantly. No, nope. I didn't even I didn't even take a puff off this. I, I have a joint sitting outside that I can go hit if I feel like it. Right, right. But um, normally at this point, um, I got to get frustrated or something. You know what I mean? Or like it's a, it's the end of the night. And, you know, it's, it's like, okay, I'll go smoke a little weed. You right. know, but I'm, I'm, I really don't need it. You know, and then I like, I, I noticed actually today when I was meditating, uh, the desire to smoke weed came to me and I was like see it's still in you right you should need to keep pushing it away keep pushing it away uh and that of course, makes the reward when it is time 
so much better. Right. Well, that's the game that I'm playing, mm -hmm. right? That's the game I'm playing. Everyone's like, why do you torture yourself so fucking hard? Well, because when I do get to have that cheeseburger. It's all the, the more fulfilling. I can taste it right now. Mm -hmm. And that was weeks ago. It was the best fucking cheeseburger ever in my life. Right. You know, and <laughs> that's what's happening. That's the game I'm playing. It's if you eat a cheeseburger every day, you don't give a fuck about that cheeseburger. You know what I don't give a fuck about is my rice and my uh, and my oatmeal. Right. I don't care about those things, but they sustain me and they're clean nutrition that I can eat right with my vegetables and so that's great but then when I get to go live a little right and I, I went to my buddy Clint's and he was we, we watched the new Bill and Ted movie and he had some uh, a meat tray out with uh, prosciutto on it. I freaking love prosciutto. Oh, totally. So I was eating prosciutto and cheese watching this All show, right. right? And it was just like, I mean, yeah. And it was delicious. Mm -hmm. It was so good. And I hadn't eaten meat all week. And so that's that's what I'm getting at, right? You're it's not like, just eating meat, dude. You're eating prosciutto. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so you, you, you live in this, you, you, you go through life lowering the bar. Right. Really drop that thing to the floor. You know, I don't need to have the TV on and junk food in my face and fucking smoking weed and doing all this stuff to keep my mind focused. Right. I can literally just sit here with nothing on. I don't need the TV on. I don't need the radio on. I don't need anything on. I can just sit here, and I'm great. Fantastic. That took a lot of work. It took a lot of work to get to that place because I, I grew up with a TV in my bedroom, right? Like, that's what, that's what raised me. I was always watching TV. Addicted as shit to TV, right? I, I, I still have an issue going to sleep. Right, me too. Uh, if I, 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 I leave the worst it, thing on. I, I leave the put fucking on. news on, dude. Oh, God. You watch the, I haven't watched the news in so long. Right. I can't do the news, mm. but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's the thing, right? It's like everything becomes so fantastic. I have Chris Cuomo talking shit to me at night. Chris Cuomo. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I watch, um, mystery science theater. Oh fuck. Love that shit too. It's a fantastic one because it's like really not dynamic. Or I the watch audio is on Hulu. I clean. watch old episodes of South Park. Yeah. Old have South those, Park is great. Have those put me to sleep. Um, yeah. The, it's, it's. The idiot box is definitely... That's a whole nother monster. It is a total other monster. In Western civilization, it is it is what raises a lot of kids. It raised You're me, right. man. Raised me, too. I was obsessed with it, and I... I, I still am. Yeah. Yeah, I, I still am. I mean, I gotta it's work gone it. now to streaming, you know, Hulu, Amazon, Netflix. Oh, yeah. As far as, like, mainstream TV. But, yeah, I have the, those things that I have to watch. Yeah, we're about to... Uh, we're we're about to cut it. We're gonna get rid of all the apps, like no Netflix, no Hulu. Really? We got uh, Amazon because we have Amazon Prime. Right. So we're good with that. And then uh, and then we got YouTube if we want to watch something. Right, right. I, I mainly just I mean if I'm I watch a lot of YouTube. I'm gonna put some on. I'm honestly I'm so boring now. I'm just gonna listen to a lecture on YouTube. I'll put on some Sadhguru or right. some Alan Watts or some Ram Dass. Uh, and I'll just let that run, and, and those are like two hours of them just talking about philosophy, and I'm, and that's fantastic for me, you know. Like I, just, I go about my business while I, that's playing in the background, and kind of pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I was really bad. I would, uh, I would definitely like the first thing I would do in the morning, turn the TV on, and then, uh, and it would be on all day, and I'd go to bed. Uh, you know, like I'd wake, I'd kind of do the whole fall asleep watching TV and go, oh, I'm asleep, and then turn it off and go to sleep, right? Right. Um, right. And it's like, you are hypnotized by that box. Hmm. That I, I mean, I personally totally hypnotized by it. And uh, and so it's been a big struggle. That's a huge one for me is, is just getting rid of that thing um, because – I can't sleep without it. It's really hard. But I go camping all the time. I don't have a problem sleeping without TV when I'm camping. Right. Right? It's like, but because it's there, and it's it's kind of like this habit, right? It's this habit you have to break. Right, the background noise. It's It's one of those things that I have to have, and I do the same thing where I all of a sudden will fall asleep and wake myself up going, oh, and then I have to turn the TV off. And I think, why did I have it on in the first place? It yeah. was kind of uh, it lulls a you lullaby, to sleep. right? Yeah, it lulls you to sleep. That's exactly what it does. So yeah, it's uh, 
even in uh, in Ram Dass's book, so they have uh, the sleeping exercises inside the in the back of Be Here Now. Uh, there's the cookbook, which is it's it's a book on how to live your life, and it is fantastic. But it is freaking straightening by fire. You know what I mean? Like the the it's it's merciless uh, lifestyle, because I mean Ram Dass is living up in the Himalayas, and right. uh, he slept on the ground or you know he had dirt floors yeah they would sleep on wood they would sleep on wood yeah and and just they would fuck their hips all up and they did it on purpose right because if they experienced any level of comfort it was this magical like a real bed oh you know you talk, I hear about ramdas talking about finally getting himself into a real bed after being up in the mountains with his guru for months at a time and he's just like, this is magic, right? Because he's been sleeping on a board, right? And and really not sleeping, right? I mean, they 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 close their eyes for maybe three four hours, and they're cold. Yeah, and uh, but they they're in such a place mentally and physically, and they're doing all these exercises and rituals and and um and focusing their mind and being mindful of right. their uh, surroundings that their energy levels skyrocket, and they don't need to sleep. That's that kriya yoga. Yeah. Yeah, and you, and so you just um, you just are, and it's mm-hmm. it's pretty amazing stories, and so I've been following that shit. So, but again, it's like, yeah, am I gonna get a fucking piece of plywood and sleep on that? I'm no, no, <laughs> no. I have a nice bed, but it's I, I like the firm mattress for sure. But I got an acupunk uh, acupressure mat. Do you? Uh huh. Uh, like it's like a bed of nails. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Lay on that sucker for 30 minutes at a time. I'd like to check that out, actually. It's pretty awesome. I will actually uh, turn you on to where I got one. Yeah, you should. It comes with a pillow and everything. It's uh, It's got all these... Uh, it's covered in acupressure little mat- mats, like points. Okay. So, I mean, it's plastic, so they're hard. I have um, this thing right here, actually. Oh, no, 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 no. This thing is... Uh, is uh, if you stepped on it barefoot, it would suck. It'd be like stepping on Legos barefoot. Oh, okay. It's it's uh, it's an acupressure. Yeah, it's covered in all these tiny little needles. Oh, Plastic. they're needles, huh? It's they're, not like big bumps like this. No, they're like little tiny sharp. I love this thing. Foam roller, the rumble roller. And I got that because of Tony Horton. Oh yeah, Tony Horton. Yeah, freaking Beachbody P90X. I love that shit so much. It's the made, best workouts. Made me puke. The um, insanity made me puke. That's that one sure. made me puke too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't hang with the insanity. They're like, all right, push yourself harder, and I go, okay, I'm pushing yeah. harder, and then like, all right, harder, and like, okay, I'm fucking going like this, and then like, okay, go harder, and I'm like, Bleh. no. Oh my god, insanity's gross. Mm-hmm. I can't do that can't do it b90 is perfect for me it's like it's hard as shit but it's reasonable <laughs> it's reasonable you know you can get through that workout do an ab ripper and go take a shower and you're fine you know i mean it's by the time you're done you're like i can't fucking move that last 20 minutes of almost every workout it's just like oh my god do we really still have 20 minutes of this no oh but do i feel good when i'm done with it of course you do. I feel like you accomplished something. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you definitely did, right? I mean, that is an accomplishment. And I thought I was working hard outside of it, too. Like, I was doing uh, this is some pretty intense exercise regimens. Um, but then I was like, oh, I'm going to, it's really hot outside, summer hit, and I'm going to put the P90X videos on because I ain't going running in 120 degrees. And, uh, and I was like, oh, I have not been getting it. I thought I was bringing it. I was not bringing it. You know, like... Uh, the second I put them back on, it's like I have to re—I have to re-rip all my muscles again, even though I've been working out. And it's like it feels like I just got hit by a truck, and it's like, oh. But then, week three, you know, you get like through the first week, you like destroy your body. You can't—you're you're like you can't sleep enough because your body's just disheveled and it's trying to rebuild itself. And then week two, you're like. Okay, this doesn't suck as much, but it still sucks. And then week three, you're like, oh, look at my body. It bounces all over the place, and I have all this energy, and I feel amazing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, but it's like usually I don't get week four. Something will come around in my life that will prevent that from happening. and uh, Or I'll, like, I'm just a baby. I'll just get depressed about something 
you know, and then it's like hard for me to get up in the morning and I feel like depression's like an iron fucking uh, full length jacket that just covers your whole body and it just weighs you down to a million pounds and it's like, oh my God, do I have to walk across the room I'm in right now? And it seems like the hardest thing in the world. Depression sucks. Yeah, it's brutal. So I've been trying not to fuck with that so much. And, you know, I f I've found that um, a lot of my depression issues get triggered when I fuck around with drugs, honestly. You know, um, the only thing I really do is hallucinogens at this point. Right. Um, and uh, I'm not really fucking around with those anymore because it keeps triggering addictive tendencies and depression. Really? Yeah. Like, I have a great time. When, you, um, when you're doing them. When I'm doing them. And then I come down. Everything sucks that. And then everything sucks. Right, of course. And then I lose myself in that. Right. And, and then and the fact that everything sucks. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, we'll do more drugs. Right. Because it felt good when you, and then everything sucks worse. Because you're, you're in that place. Yeah, you were just did them, so who cares, right? Right, like, right. And then that's a big mistake. And then, so then you cycle that, and then it's twice, Vicious. twice as rough, right? Vicious like you, cycle. That, you, yeah. you wake up the day after the second time when you, you fixed it, right? You didn't fix shit. No. You made it twice as worse. Right. And now I'm falling into a depression, and I'm like, I got to do something about this. And usually, more drugs. It usually takes more. What? Exactly. What are you doing? And and then I sit, yeah, and and it's just like, dude, this is not working. This isn't working, and. uh and it's triggering all these negative effects. Right. And so I've just, I've kind of said I don't need any of them anymore. Right? Like, fuck all of them. Uh, and I'm just going straight and clean right up the middle. No anything on any side of the fence. And It's hmm. abrasive and it's bright. Yeah. Reality gets very edgy sometimes. It does, man. And it's like when I'm... When I'm not all fucked up on, and my, my emotions aren't all over the place because right. I've been taking mushrooms or I've been taking acid or whatever, right? And it's like, um, I mean, you, you, you reach these new levels of enlightenment and you, you really are able to take in the world with so much love when right. you're on those substances. And, and, and you really realize a lot of, like, important shit. Um, and so they're very valuable. When you're on drugs, right? Yeah, when you're on But the whole the thing is re the, retaining all of that. Retaining all of it's important. Right. And um and so like the so like the last one, like so I'm coming out of a a big one. I I I felt um I feel pretty depressed after I did a huge like Terrence McKenna level mushroom trip. Um, because I was doing this thing where I was um so we're doing how much time do I got? Okay, I got enough time. So, so like I was explaining earlier, right, about like um, the burger being the best burger I ever ate. So I learned this with the hallucinogens as well. Right. So if you um, if you totally keep everything out of your system, cleanse yourself, cleanse yourself, and purify yourself, and you just work out like a motherfucker, and you you really eat and clean all month long, and then on the full moon, you trip. I would trip every full moon. That's some Carlos Castaneda shit. There. Yeah. You knew Carlos Castaneda? No. The teachings but, of Don Juan. The teachings of Don Juan. You need to read those. I have books. to check that out. It's all about a uh, uh, South American shamanism and yeah. ayahuasca and shrooms and all that other shit. These books are written late sixties, early seventies. It's about a guy who goes, American guy who goes down there, and uh, I do believe it's Mexico, and hooks up with a shaman that shows him, you know, all about astral projection and the different hallucinogens and stuff like that and that's their whole thing too is cleansing your body until it comes time for the the ritual yeah which it is a ritual that's how i was treating it right um but then day two right full moon was yesterday and i'm waking up from tripping hella hard on the full moon <laughs> and it's like well i mean i did take mushrooms yesterday so i mean i'm not pure anyways and then like you go through this whole bullshit game uh, in your head anal and then you, analyzing yourself yeah and then you drop some acid to it. fucking pick yourself back up because right. you're feeling kind of down um hangover cure yeah or like <laughs> i had a, a fucking huge problem with like nitrous oxide if you ever know you know the grateful dead you know the, yeah. the big balloons of oh, nitrous yeah. man oh, yeah. you're tripping hard and it's like it's just what you need the helicopter's coming yeah and you hear your heart 
<laughs> so it's like, man, you know, you get lost in that shit. Right, you get lost right. in it. And then it brings you way up, way up above the stratosphere. Mm -hmm. And then it takes you way further down than you were when you took it. Right. right. Like you come down off that stuff. And what is it? The uh, uh, it's one of the fins, one of the endorphins. Uh, oh, yeah. Your that, dopamine levels. Yeah, your dopamine. Your dopamine, your dopamine is totally that's screwed. The, that's the, like with ecstasy. Your dopamine yeah. is like so through the roof that you love everybody. You love everything that's soft and everything. And then the next day, you used up so much dopamine that you just... You're fried. Right. And that's one of the reasons that it feels so heavy, right? Like right. I was saying, that feels like this giant iron coat that's over the top of you. You're, you know, this depression or this right. lack of dopamine that's happening. Um, and, and it literally is. I mean, the dopamine's what gets you up. Kind of like being in an Iron Maiden. You get yeah. the iron coat and everything's very pokey and sharp. Yeah, it just sucks, right? <laughs> right. And it's yes. like, dopamine's what gets you up in the morning. Right. Dopamine yeah. is you wake up and it gives you a little pop and mm -hmm. you're like, oh, okay, I'm like, I can, I have enough to get out of bed. Mm -hmm. Right. And then people go and make their coffee. Right. right. And then that coffee gives you more dopamine. And so that dopamine, that it, starts, it starts stacking <laughs> during the day. Right. Right. But if you're doing all this other shit, right. And then say you're depressant like me, mm -hmm. um, um, uh, so your dopamine levels just fucking plummet. plummet. Right. Yeah, they're I'm, just gone. I'm that way too. They're I get gone. easily depressed. And uh, and so it takes me a good week to come out of that, right? right. And I'm not working out that week. I can barely get out of bed. I'm not answering my phone that week. I'm worthless. I'm barely keeping up with the podcast, you know, as far as like I, I, I record these things well in advance um, just in case anything happens to your where self-evaluation of your, your yeah. the, yourself analyzing and evaluating yourself brings you to a point where you feel you're just a piece of shit. Yeah. I just want to kill myself right. usually. I'm just like, well, I don't even know why I exist. I should just end this suffering. Right. Why don't I end this suffering by I'm murdering worth, myself? I'm not worth it to anybody. I get it. Yeah, and it's like, dude, that's not how it works because you're just going to be born again and you're going to keep suffering. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> you're just stuck on a vicious cycle, man. Right. The goal is to become enlightened and then leave this cycle of birth and death. Whether or not that's true or not, it's a great way to live your life. Got to be reincarnated as a fly on a stack of cow dung in New Delhi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you know that the whole the whole goal of Buddhism is to no longer be born, right? right? But you don't get that unless you can find enlightenment in this world mm -hmm. and you make heaven on earth. You know, and you, with Hinduism, you got to come back as all the different animals. Yeah, that's the thing too. Until you can come back as Brahma, and then when you know you you've cruised around as a cow for a while, you're you're good. Yeah, it's, is that the is Hinduism? Is that where it ends yeah. up at? Okay, uh, Brahma. I, I'm looking forward to that read. Right. Like, the, dude, the freaking, the Western religions, the books are so thick. Right. They're just, the, the Bible itself, the Old Testament and New Testament is fucking huge. It's, uh, it's been taking with, me a while to get through it. a lot of rules. Yeah, it's a lot of rules. A lot of a rules lot of stories, to make you be good. Morality. Uh, you know, Sadhguru says a great thing about it, which is... You don't find much service to others in the Bible. No, it's not about that. It's a, it's a, um, it's, um... Which you it's should. outsourcing survival mechanisms. Right. And that's what right. it's doing, right? So you're, you're, you're sitting there and you have these instinctual survival mechanisms and you're terrified, you need to eat, you need to come up with money, whatever it is, right? And a lot of people, they, they pray for these things. They say, please, someone, give me the money I need. Please, someone, save me from my suffering. Please, someone, uh, you know, make sure that my fucking kid does well in school or whatever. It's all these survival mechanisms and you're asking you're asking the world to do your job for you. Right. And you're trying to relieve all the pressures of, uh, just existence in general. Uh, and, and cause it's so painful. Yeah. And put that burden on someone else as opposed to getting yourself together. Like, right. Introspection. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Peterson does a great self, thing. Self realization. Yeah. Self realization. That's what it is. That's, right. that's one of the beautiful things that this pandemic has given me is self realization or right. uh, getting close to it. I, I don't know if I, I have or haven't, you don't know these things, right? No, no. One of the, one well, of the first things I had. Buddhist does not call himself a Buddhist. Yeah. Cause that's part of ego. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, I don't either. I, I follow Buddhism. Right. right? And, exactly. And I'm walking, I'm try, attempting to walk the eightfold that path, path. Right. Right. But I can't say I'm enlightened in any way. I can just say I, I feel better. I know that it, I feel it. I, I, I am more content with my existence when I walk the Eightfold Path. Which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, it, these, are th these are things that work. Right. They're not, it's not me asking someone else to solve my problems. No, it's you're doing me it yourself. 
putting my boots on and getting it done. It's well, like I have to go solve my own problems. We discussed this on our phone call a while back. Uh, yeah. Only you can fix you. Yeah, you're the only person. Even when you go see a therapist, the right. therapist is just going to give you That's tools we to fix about. yourself. Right, exactly. And so Buddhism offers a lot of really And most of the time they're going to ask you, the, the main question they ask you, shrinks and therapists and everything, that first fucking question is, yeah. how do you feel? Yeah, which is a loaded fucking question. Right. I'm a spectrum of emotions. Exactly. How do I feel right now is irrelevant to how I feel in general. Uh-huh. Is it, I mean, I guess that's the question. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's... <sighs> and that's what's, that is a big part of the mental unwellness of America right now. Yeah. As, as people are realizing how secluded their lives really are. Yeah. Alone with themselves they really are. Unable to communicate with each other because they feel so loathsome with themselves that it makes it hard to love anybody else. Yeah, you have to love yourself. If you can't love yourself, what was it? Maya Angelou said that right. Don't. Uh, if you can't love yourself, don't pretend you love me. Right. Because you don't. I don't need you lying to me. You can't even love yourself. You can't love me. You can't love someone else. All right. And that's you got to start at home. You got to fix. You got to you got to tend to the garden that you can touch. Right. And uh, you can't you can't fix the world, but you can fix you yourself. You try to throw your arms around it. It's difficult, but you know. Yeah, you got to fix yourself, and that. That's where the world comes from. Right. A lot, a lot of shortcuts come in, into play. Yeah. You know, people would rather numb themselves than fix themselves. Yeah, they think taking a pill or something like that. Right. Um, that's another one I do. I I I will get a little fucking thing of value from my doctor if I'm really stressed out. And it's like, what is that going to do? Right? It's going to make me not so angry. But, again, I start relying on the volume. Right. And then... The anger becomes worse because you're because, just numbing yourself out, but it's below yeah. the, it's below the surface. It's below the surface, losing control, right? I'm I can't feel the anger, mm. and so therefore I'm not dealing with the anger, right? And it's like it's just come. It's coming in a worse way. You're just you're you're what you're doing is you're taking away your ability to deal with your problems, mm. and you're just you're ignoring them, and so they're getting worse. And you're not practicing your mindfulness. So now you're becoming less capable of dealing with this problem when you decide, okay, I'm going to fucking drop the volume and deal with my problems. Um, they're way harder to fucking deal with. They're way harder to deal with. And your emotions are all over the place because you're now, um, you know, you were, you had this threshold where you couldn't spike over the top of, but now right. you're just fucking doing this. You know, you're up and down and up and down. Um, and uh, it's just best to just not use those because they are it's a great it's a great safety net mm. and that's what i try to that's what i keep a little bit around for when i'm like falling super hard into despair and i'm like well, i'm just i'm so lost that's america's way too yeah. man, is they've they've used this pharmacology as a safety net for the longest time instead yeah. of well, now it's the fucking solution. Well, it is. Then instead they're, of they're, instead of fixing people, yeah, give them a fucking pill. Well, it's way hard to fix people. Yeah, you can't fucking fix everybody. And well, a lot of people don't want to be fixed. Yeah, they they think that they are fine just the way they are. Right. And they are going to uh, they're just going to just take this pill and then they'll be perfect. Right. right. And it's like I'm great. I just have this one little issue. I don't want to deal with it on a mental level. And so I'll just take a pill and that'll solve all my problems. And now I'm fucking perfect. And it's like, you're not, and you're getting worse. Every day you're taking that thing to solve your problem, you're getting worse. And now I'm not talking about antidepressants. I'm talking no. about like tranquilizers right. or Xanax. Um, yeah, no, antidepressants are different. That's a whole different game altogether. And um, and you're, you're putting lock and key mechanisms back into your system that need to be there for you to function. Right. That's a totally different animal. And antidepressants, sometimes people need them just like, uh, say someone who lost both of their testicles needs a testosterone injection to get a, an erection. Right. Right. They, they're not going to get an erection without testosterone. You're not going to feel happy without the proper fucking levels of, of hormones in your brain and the proper lock and key mechanisms triggering in your brain. And so, yeah, that, that, that's a, that's a whole different animal that people get involved with. But again, you can fix the problems in your life and you can start working on mindfulness exercises and slowly you know, pull these, the antidepressants out as well, which a lot of people attempt to do. And a lot of people are successful with that. Right. 
um, and they can get back to a place because this is the most um, abundant chemical factory you're ever going to get a hold of, right? I mean, you have this human body. And all it does, it's just a chemical soup. Right. Yeah, all your emotions are chemical soups, uh, and you're just, you just need to be a better cook. You need to be aware that you're cooking all day, right? You're all day you're cooking, and you don't realize it, and you're so you're you're just fucking up everything you make because you're not you're not accepting that you're responsible for the chemical reactions in your system. Well, that's I think one of the biggest things with uh, uh, Western society in general is that we will not own our shit. Yeah, we will not own our shit. It's at all. It's hard. People will not face the music and realize that they're to blame for a lot of their own problems. Yeah. You create the world around you. I mean, right. It's uh, your perception of this quantum fucking mashup of infinite we, particles around rarely you. Rarely do it's, we step out. It's not see, reality. Rarely do we step out of ourselves and look at ourselves as other people see us. Yeah. That you can't. No. That's the other thing. Uh, I mean, how am I supposed to see myself how someone else sees me, right? right? Because that's that's not the game I'm playing. I can only mind read your thought process or project your thought process onto myself. Comes to communication again. Yeah, and it's like it'll never be a clear cut um, uh, perception of what you're actually seeing right. about me, right? Uh, I can I can just I can just guess. <laughs> I can make these estimates right. based on how you act or what you say to me, right, about how you perceive me. But then my own concept of my self-perception comes into play, and then that's going to get mixed up with what I'm throwing your perception of my perception in there. Uh, and, and there's nothing, nothing's real. When you really get down to it, right, none of it's fucking real. No. Because a honeybee seeing ultraviolet light, you know, bats navigate by sonar. It's everybody's reality is their reality. Yeah. There's, there's, you, you have all these interactions with the, the, the infinite around you. Right. And it's, mm. there's, there's all these, uh, these quantum interactions that occur with your perceptions and your senses. Right. And uh, the way you translate that into hallucination in your mind is unique for each individual, not just each individual person, but each individual animal on the planet does it in their own unique way. And none of them are actually reality. There is no actual reality, right? There's just the perception of reality. Right. And how we translate the photons in the air into a picture for our brain to see or how we translate the fluctuations of air particles in the room we're in into sound, right? But a bat translates that into a visual thing, more like a like radar sonar. sense, right? It takes the air, air fluctuations and completely translates a them radar. into a different yeah. thing, right? Yeah, like right. radar. radar. Uh, and you know, like I was saying, the honeybee sees in ultraviolet spectrums, right. right? Like we cannot comprehend what that would be. Uh, and um, or stomatopods. Stomatopods a great example, right? We see red, green, blue. Stom uh, it's, that's three primary colors, but stomatopods see sixteen primary colors. What the fuck does the world look like when sixteen primary colors? You can't wrap your head around it. Your brain's not designed to. Uh, and so, um, but all of these things are viewing the quantum soup. They're all viewing the same particles you're viewing, but through different sense organs and right. through a different hallucinator. And everything's concept of reality is a completely different experience, completely different. And you'll never get there. You'll never be able to know what someone experiences. That's what art is, right? Right. Um, like painting is, is just, I, I had this experience, right? Like I paint psychedelic experiences. That's what I've been getting into. Right. So if I, I smoke some DMT, I'll have this amazing kaleidoscopic trip or I'll totally leave my body and go into the DMT space and I want to paint those things because it's the only way I can communicate them to people. I can't, like, with words, I can't tell you what I saw. Right. And I can paint it, and that's not going to tell you what I saw. That's this my shitty attempt at painting because I'm not a painter. Uh, I'm not at all uh, trained in it or educated in it. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just drawing or, you know, you know creating a visual uh, interpretation of my personal experience onto canvas that you then have to interpret. Right. There's no way to, for me to actually explain my perception properly no. to a point where it's crystal clear, except with uh, mathematics, which I thought was an interesting concept. How much time do I got? We're almost out of time. We got like five minutes left. Um, 
so uh, I forget who brought it up, but obviously it was a mathematician. But uh, they uh, they were talking about how in the future, right, we're getting to the point where we're going to start having all these implants put in us. Right. And we're going to start. Uh, I saw something on that. Yeah. So we'll be communicating more psychically, right? Like I, we have the cell phone, right? I can communicate with you through my cell phone. But once the cell phone is part of my sense uh, organs, then I can communicate just you by thought, just by thought. Right. right. Um, and so that'll happen. It's like that's not even that's not even science fiction. That's just a matter of time. Moody Blues said in a song from the '60s, they said uh, thinking is the fastest way to travel. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely, I mean, talking about astral projection, right? So, um, so they get into the whole fact that language is such a barbaric way of communicating, <laughs> Which right? Is, sounds weird. We but... do these guttural utterances through our throat yeah. and tongue, and right. uh, we translate that into words that right. we've given meaning to. And it's just really clunky. It's a clunky way of communicating my thoughts to you. And so they go, in the future, right, everyone's going to be communicating through mathematical equations. And so they'll just say this, the, the table in the room, you know, but it'll be all sent to you uh, instantaneously through, like, psychic communication with technology, right? right. But you, I'll send you exact dimensions thought, of the table. Thought picture. Yeah, right. Is, you're right. It, it's, it's all the math of everything that's happening around you. There was, you know, there was, what, seven knobs, and each knob was, you know, two centimeters high by, you know, one centimeter in diameter, and, and it had this spectrum of white on it, and you can go the exact color of white, and it goes, boom, you know, it's all math. And I can explain this to you in a mathematical equation perfectly, as, as close to perfect as we could comprehend. That's crazy. And translating our perception to someone That's else. That's crazy talk. And equal qualia. <laughs> it's, it's qualia, right? Is the, right? The, the, the quality of the world around us that we agree that this is happening, right? Right. I agree that we're sitting in a room. Do you think that this will be... I agree that that's, we call that brown. You call that brown, too. You think this will be, if, if it's going to be with the mind, that it can also help people that can't see? Yeah. To see. Yeah. Well, they already have um, they already have uh, implants for hearing. Right. Right. And uh, and they already have a lot of killer technology that they're getting into where they'll replace if the, you, if, uh, if ocular you're implants. Putting a, a thought into your brain. Yeah. Then it shouldn't have anything. You don't need your eyes right, to you see. Don't, that's what I'm th- saying. You don't need your eyes. Yeah, you you can still hallucinate visuals right. without eyes, and that's all. All the eyes are doing is they're translating the photons that are that are flying at your face into a visual. Right, that's what they're doing. And I mean, you have to flip it upside down even. Right, they, the, the the way that the eyes reflect what's it's, happening in the room. And the photo, right, yeah, right. So, you don't need any of those things though. Right, like to to still hallucinate an image in your mind. It's a crazy thought. And um, and so bypassing it, like when Ray Kurzweil talks about virtual reality in the future, he just goes, oh, so we'll just bypass all your sense organs and then transmit the new images into you. Into your brain. Yeah, directly. Wow. And so it will be what you're seeing, and it will be what you're hearing, and it will be what you're feeling, and uh, even smelling, right? And all of it. And it'll just be a big um, just information dump into your brain that we can translate into a different hallucination. You taste and we're it. Currently 30, translating with what our is it? Thirty percent of smell organic sense organs is, is taste. Yeah. Uh, and so it, it's just too. it's a totally different world we're right. going into, where perception in general is going to be uh, pushed to its limits. And uh, that is probably the last thing I can say. I think we have one minute left. <laughs> Amazing. We went, we went crazy. <laughs> we did. We did, man. So, um, you I didn't would, even talk about music. I would, <laughs> dude, art. I talk about music with everybody, man. Right, this is what I'm way more interested I, in talking about, uh, you know, philosoph- life, philosophy. philosophy. Yeah, I yeah, I love dude. it, dude. I do. Uh, so I will, we'll I, do food next. Food is so great. Uh, I would love that. So, uh, thank you. I'd love to thank my guests. Bro. Tommy Elliott. Thank you for having me. You're amazing. Thank you so much for such a fantastic conversation. Intelligence, wit, depth, and perception. The Jason Froberg Hour. Ah, tight. Well, we'll go do it. This has been To the Fullest. Fade to black. Boom! Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching my podcast. You can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here. We are a new podcast every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.